Well, let's call the meeting to order. In accordance with the There's an echo. Is there an echo? There's yeah, an, an echo. echo. Yeah. Should I just Some feedback. One second. In accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record that this meeting is be being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. This meeting is also being recorded by the town of North Reading via Zoom. And if you could please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our first order of business, which is the show cause hearing for Thompson Country Club. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. If you could just take a seat, that oh. microphone. Oh, you're good. Does, it, does that work? Good. All right. If you could please state your names for the record, too. And we're being joined by people watching online. So. Um, you can use that microphone, that's what we can hear you, but that's what people pull it to the hands of home. For the record, my name is attorney Timothy Hooten, H-O-E-T-E-N. I represent Thompson Clubs, and this will be Mario Ruiz. Mario Ruiz, who is the manager of record. Okay. And we're also joined by Jeff Hooten, H-O-O-T-E-N. Yes, Jeff Hooten, H-O-O-T-E-N. Yes, Jeff Hooten, H-O-O-T-E-N. And we're also joined here by Chief Murphy, as well as Lieutenant Zimmerman, to present the facts on behalf of why we're here at the show pausing. So, Chief Murphy, if you could just give us a rundown of what happened and why we're here. I will. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I previously submitted several reports. I've tried to do the best to summarize that um, in my report to you this evening. For the past few months, as part of our ongoing efforts to reduce the availability of alcohol and prevent underage drinking in our community, we've conducted alcohol compliance checks on businesses licensed to sell alcohol. Our department conducts these checks following the um, ABCC guidelines. As part of those guidelines, we advertised in the North Reading transcript on April 21st of this year, the North Reading patch on May 4th, as well as our own police department website and social media outlets. Um, that these checks were going to be conducted over the next several months. On May 13th of this year, North Reading detectives, with the assistance of a 16 and 17 year old, conducted an alcohol compliance check at various liquor license establishments in North Reading. Um, before um, the checks were conducted, an operation briefing was given to both juveniles. Um, instructions were given on how to, the compliance checks would work. State identification cards and licenses were confiscated from the underage persons. All personal belongings were left at the police station with the only exception of the cell phone. As part of the guidelines, both underage persons were given a breathalyzer and it was documented they both blew 0 0.0. Following instructions were given to each underage person regarding how to perform the checks. They were to enter a designated establishment and order alcohol beverage from a server or bartender. If a state identification card was asked for, they were told that they did uh, state that they did not have one, and if service was still not provided, they were to leave the premises immediately. The underage person would not provide any false information to employees, such as portraying themselves as being 21 years or older. If they were served alcohol, they were to make a mental note of who the server was, and they would notify our detectives. Again, on May 13th of this year, at approximately 5.39, detectives and the underage assistants arrived at the Thompson Country Club Grill Room and Bar, located 2 Mid-Iron Drive. Approximately 5.51, the two under assigned underage persons entered the Thompson Country Club. Within two minutes, the underage assistants notified our detectives that they were served alcohol. Our detectives, Peter DiPietro and Paul Lucci, entered the grill. They met with the two underage persons who told them the following. They entered the grill and both took a seat at the bar. They spoke with the bartender and ordered a Corona and a Bud Light draft. The bartender served them both drinks they ordered. The bartender asked them for their member ID number, which they replied they did not have one, because this is a private establishment. The bartender told them that's okay and left the alcohol in front of them and walked away. The minor saw and heard a uh, second bartender ask if um, the server had carded them. The server came back and asked, do I need to ID you guys? They responded they did not have IDs and they said thank you and walked out of the premises. 
Now they were walking out, they saw the servant take the alcohol back. Uh, they described the bartender who was later identified as Joanna Shanaiji. Uh, the detectives met and spoke with restaurant manager Mario Ruiz, who is here tonight, and advised him of the violation. Spoke with the bartender as well. She said she was aware and he knew the two people that they were referring to and admitted selling alcohol to them. Um, she did tell the detectives that she asked for their member ID, but she said they were not members. She thought they were both in their 20s and served them. Um, after serving them, she asked them for their IDs. And she said they both uh, said they didn't have one, so she took the alcohol back. Um, Mario told our detectives that they do not ID in the restaurant due to the club being a private club. Detectives verified that the server is um, a TIPS trained server um, and her training is up to date. And prior to leaving, they left the violation notice. Um, Madam Chair, as well, I'd like to just um, mention that our, um, prior to the, um, as well as pre advertising, our drug free community grant director, Amy Luckowitz, who also serves as your server training program auditor, visited the Thompson Club a week prior to the alcohol violation, spoke with um, manager Mario Ruiz. It was not an official visit, however, um, it was, she was just there to educate. During that visit, she updated him about the changes to the North Riding bylaws related to the alcohol compliance training. She offered to assist new staff in getting tips certified and she provided tips on spotting fake IDs and reminded him at that time that compliance checks and business can happen at any time. Um, and after this violation, she also visited um, and spoke with Mario, who was very cooperative. Um, she offered tips and training and also set up an additional training for um, all of her, their staff for um, later in that month, which did occur. That's a summary of, of what had occurred on May 13th. Thanks, Chief. Do, do any of my colleagues have any questions? Mr. Walner? I'm just trying to understand the member ID versus driver's license. Can you just shed any light on that? Like, what's the rules about that? How that, how that works, if you know? I don't know. If so, I, well, the Tom's Club is a private club, so you have to pay uh, initiation fee or tuition on an annual basis. Um, neither one of them were um, members, so they asked for their member ID. I think. Mario can explain probably okay. how that process works a little bit better, but um, I assume that everybody is 21 years or older who's a member, and that's probably why they did not. Okay, thank you. The law requires IDs to be taken, and there's six forms, six specific forms of ID under the law that are acceptable. A member ID isn't one of them, so okay. you, that includes for a club that's serving alcohol. Thank uh, you. Any other questions? I, uh, uh, well, I, well um, attorney Putin can yeah. speak and then we can have more okay. questions, but I, I mean, of any questions of the chief? And I, I just have one quick question. Did you say Joanna, the bartender, was or was not tips trained? She was. She was, okay, so. And then, uh, just to confirm, they the two of them told her they didn't have IDs. Correct. And she still served them in. So they, she asked for their member ID, which is the Thompson Club member ID. They said they did not have one. She served them, and then another bartender said, did you, I, did you card them, meaning the state identification? At that point, she came over and asked them if they had their, their IDs or, or if they were 21. They said no, and then they left, and she took the other one. Okay. All right. Thanks, Chief. Attorney, do you have any questions for Chief Murphy before you present on behalf of the license? No questions. Uh, please proceed. No, um, I the facts the statement they were. I mean, I could have a little difference of where the beers were placed as opposed to the young men that came in. Uh, they were never given the beers. They never touched the beer. But um, it's still the problem, and I think you can guess the problem is that they were lax because it is a membership only. If, you, if Mr. Walner came in tomorrow and ordered a beer, he would not get a beer. He's not a member, um, so it did cause a certain complacency with the um, with the staff because they know that you know if you're a member, you tend to look like me. You tend to be an older person. So when she turned around and asked for the member ID, didn't have one. She clearly at that point should have taken the beers back. I don't know why she left them there. And then when the other asked for the um, the, uh, the license, so obviously she took the beer at that point back. 
But clearly it was lax since that point. Uh, we're passed um, through the police department, we had some additional training. Uh, we brought back in, we've now put up signs, we've brought them, all the staff up to date to say, I understand you think it's a private club, but somebody could still get in here. You're still required to ask for IDs. You know, there's not all old guys like me in there. There, there are certain people, younger guys, and these days, like, I couldn't tell you who's 20 and who's 30 or 40. I think the older I get, the younger they look. So clearly, I'm telling, we're telling the staff that, you know, I don't care. So the sign up, the sign that's up that says, if you're not 40, you're getting ID. So um, I, you know, that's, that's what we're doing. It's, it's been a, you know, we've had a long history of uh, no complaints. Uh, maybe, the, you know, the, the black has got a little too compliant to line with the fact that if you're a member, you're a member over 21. Um, but we're doing everything we can. And, they really uh, kind of cut down, but I have no dispute with the facts whatsoever. I, I would agree that's exactly what happened. The other came in, she asked for a member's ID, she turned her back, and then the other black said, said, you have a license, and I took the other back. But at that point, she should have asked for a license first. I care about the, I care about the member ID, care about how old these people were, and, you know, looking at them, so that's. Do any questions, Mrs. Gonzalez? I have a question for the chief in response to um, what the attorney said. Um, when you do these compliance checks, are they allowed to take a sip of the beer? They're they're told not to. Sure. Yeah. So when they say the beers were taken back, they hadn't been drunk. That doesn't mean that they, if they were just regular couple of underage kids, they probably would have. Um, yeah, I mean, if they weren't, if it wasn't controlled, you mean? I mean, yeah, I would assume so. Correct. But I mean, so the, could, I'm sorry. The violation is the actual serving. So the delivering of the alcohol the, from here the to there is the violation. And so at that point, they're instructed, no matter, even if they, didn't matter if they were in a public place, they were to get up and leave at that point and be contact our detectives. Thank you. I just want to clarify that. Mr. Studo. So there's been no other violations ever? By the club, not I'm just I'm just curious. Not that I'm aware. Of. Okay. Do you, Do you know? So, it, to my knowledge, there has been none. But I defer to the town administrator's office. Okay. I do not believe it's been a violation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, we do have a, a tally that goes back 25 years, and I don't, I don't believe that there are any previous violations on that tally. And then, um, so, private club. Uh, I've been I've been to many. So, but. But the member ID, right, is relevant to book, correct? correct. Like uh, who gets charged? Who gets charged for the drink? Yeah, correct. So, so meaning though that, um, but you're able to go in without like showing a member ID card. Sure, anybody can walk in. Anybody, anybody can walk in. in. We don't have like a guy okay. to do it. So, all right. No, and quite, I want to be quite honest. If you are a member, you could come in with your grandchild. You could come in with your yeah. children. You, oh, you just somebody has to be a company. You, you just can't. You could not walk in <laughs> unaccompanied by anybody that's not a member. But I, as if you, you were my friend, I could bring you in. Okay? So the general public can come in, but only as a guest. Mm -hmm. So and the, and that should have been the tip off first. If there's no member ID, we're gone. Yeah. And this has nothing to do with the alcohol. This has to do with the running of the club. If the person doesn't have a member ID or is not with a member, someone with a member ID, they should be escorted out of the premises anyway because they're not a member. And and that's my, I think the, that's how I'm looking at it. That it's very easy to identify a red flag at a private club, especially like a you know I, I've been to many, and usually you're right. I mean. Good amount of people that look like me too. They don't look like you, but um, but it's pretty kind of obvious from the private section of it, right? You know, so it's almost. I just feel it's more of. I mean, I'm assuming maybe it was busy. It was hectic only because an experience like server. That's that. It's a dead giveaway just from the fact of like I'm in a private country club and like two kids that kind of could be there you know what I mean so I'm it, that's where I'm looking at it that maybe you know it should have been a dead giveaway and it wasn't so but I, I don't know I mean we'll never get to see who these kids are but that's what I'm just trying to say that maybe it's something where you know because because there's no violations ever 
but from before. So that's great. I mean, that gives me track record and trend, which I'm big on. But at the same time, it's like, what was going on that this was like kind of missed? Because it's just, it would be obvious to anyone. I mean, because you're right. And, and just to be honest with you, all of our um, bartenders are bartenders in public establishments also. Okay. So this isn't something like this is an inexperienced person. They, they know. They, they work in other establishments where anybody can walk in. So I'm not saying it's a forgivable event. I'm saying it's, yeah, she should, she should not have done that. that. I don't know why that happened. It doesn't happen, but um, clearly. And, and Ms. Gonzalez, I just want to say, I never suggested that the boys would take a sip. I'm just suggesting the location of the beer, whether it's, if I'm over here and you put beers there, is that within my grasp? Or if I put beers right in front of you, is that within my grasp? But again, they were served, not just muting the facts at all. It sounds like you are. There's nothing in here that says it was a busy, it was a busy. Oh, no, no, I'm not saying we that. We can't make up facts and aren't recorded here. This was a sting operation that they were ahead of time notified of. And it says right there they went up to the bar and they ordered the two beers and they were served the two beers. So we don't need to steer off of the truth of what is written. And I'm not, I'm not a Or what happened. Right, again, I, I did say that. Yeah, I assume it was busy, too busy to check an ID. I, I, I don't think we need to go off to what is what is right before us is black and white. Mrs. Gonzalez? How long had this Joanna Chinaj been working there? That night or ever? Ever. Four Which, years. Four years for us. She's been there for four years? Yes. So is, so is that her standard just? No, actually. Um, give everybody their drink when they come in because no, she has a she has a lot of regulars. Um, that's, we we violated by, by opening up the bar. That's what, that's, what she told me was she opened up. They asked for the beer. She turned around. She opened up the bar. She put it in front of her. I don't recall it being another server telling her the ID. She asked for a member number. They didn't have one. I said you have an ID. They didn't have one. And I can't serve you. That was an exact story it changed up a little bit um, it doesn't matter she opened up the beer but that beer never left her her arms area so I'm not sure if it makes a difference but that's exactly yeah that's not how this report reads right so i saw it and i didn't want to interrupt um, somehow i changed the detectives promised me they were writing the way it happened and they repeated it twice to me they also repeated it to her Change a little bit. Okay. Let's, I, I have some questions, but I want to make sure all my colleagues are squared away. Do you have anything else, Ms. Gonzalez, Mr. Warner? Any other questions? I'm good, Mr. thank you. Okay. Um, you were there, though, Mr. Yes. Ruiz, and your statement was taken, yes. too. So are you saying that the police didn't record yours or Joanna's statement correctly? So sounds like that's what you're saying. So yeah, so when I when, when they told me the story of how, how it happened is well, you were there. You were there. Yes. Okay. But I was there but I was in the corner, I didn't I didn't view it what happened. I was interacting with another guest. And when that happened, I said, When did that happen? She said, Right now, just now. The officers walked in and I asked them if we go to the office. And I asked again, when did that happen? Literally just now. I said, Okay. And we went downstairs and they told me the story, she said the story at, I, I opened up the bottle, I put it in front of the bar, I asked them for the number ID number, they didn't have one, I asked who they associated with, and they said no one, I said, do you have any IDs, they said no, she then grabbed them and said, I, I'm sorry, I can't serve you, so that was the exact story that she said to me, um, we have a law book, and they're required to write anything in the night, and she wrote exactly that. That's Again, neither of us were present during the interaction. We're just relying on the recollection of other people. That's totally different than what's in the report. And when respectfully, when I'm sitting here listening to you and I have my officer's report, I'm banking on this to be the accurate facts. How long have you been the manager? I've been a kitchen manager for close to seven years. And now I'm the food and beverage director for the first season. This is your first year Six doing this. So in your very first year, we have a pretty serious violation. Not just the not carding 
or asking for the proper forms of ID, but also their minors. Yeah, no, I, I, and then I, I, let's keep piling on. You were warned ahead of time. They they blitz media about this ahead of time. So as a as a, an establishment in the community, it's it defies logic that. Number, number one, the story that you're telling me defies logic. It defies what's being been written by someone who was there, two people that were there, and it also is just baffling that. They do all of these public service, they do these meetings, they're available, they're accessible, and it still happens anyway. So um, that's a huge problem for me. And does she know the forms of ID? Do you know yes, the forms uh, of ID? Yeah, we, we, we've had a couple of meetings with ABA. We came in and we did, uh, basically had a, a hour and a half class. Everybody was very excited, very informative. We understand we, uh, we weren't going things probably the right way because when a member becomes a member, they get ID and they get uh, documented. And some, of, some of the pictures, most of the pictures are on the computer of who the member is. And if we ask for a number number, it comes up on the computer. So they're used to that. Um, it's not the right way, and we're changing it. We, we, we change it immediately. Everybody is on board to what we have to do, and we're doing it. So after this happened, you met with Amy Lutzkowitz, and then you had training of your staff? Yes. Okay. And also, I wanted to ask you, when you're, when you're talking about this getting a member ID in your computer system, when someone comes in and orders a drink, you're looking them up to see if their face matches what's in your computer. Is that so, what you're saying? So you would, but some of them don't have the picture, so it's not 100 percent. But you can, as soon as the member ID number gets document, their their information comes up, and their picture comes up, and according to us, they are already a member, so they've already been ID'd at 21 and over. Have you issued any written policies on compliance with the? The requirements after this happened? No. I think it's, I know it's the first time. We don't want any times. Yes. And I wonder how many times it happened mm -hmm. before this it, that just weren't, that just wasn't caught. I you know, that would be, would be my saying. thing. And I would consider you lucky that this was the time you were caught so that we could prevent this from happening going sure. forward. Anybody else have any questions or comments or anything? <coughs> Mr. O'Leary. Yeah, just a little bit disconcerting that there's a, a vast difference between the report and what's being reported yes. to us uh, this evening. You know, it's important to understand that, as the chair pointed out, you know, the police department runs this on a, an annual basis. They advertise this isn't a, a gotcha mentality at all for the town of North running this administration or uh, Chief Murphy or anybody else. You know, it's just to help. Uh, Keep people away, keep the uh, licensees aware that, you know, we're going to be checking. We'd let you know in advance. Um, they've done dozens and dozens of these. Uh, they do dozens and dozens of these, uh, you know, over the last 25 years, they've done hundreds of them. And never has anybody come in and said that the report didn't match what happened. They're giving a, a very different uh, take as to what would occur. So that's a bit disconcerting. Uh, it doesn't change our long-standing practices to you know how we generally handle these anyway. It, it, it's not going to affect my uh, uh, my vote in, in any fashion or another. But I just want to make you aware that you know, if you're calling into question what was reported to us, that's of concern. I mean, I would be concerned, you know, but but I'm not because I have full faith, you know, in the police department how they've done it. This isn't their first run through with this and. Uh, I would tend to believe what was reported to us, what these two kids who volunteered to do this uh, for the community have been well trained as to how to do it and how to report it and what's, what occurred. Uh, so I have full faith in the report that was brought to the board. Uh, so that, that, now, otherwise, you know, you've, got, you've got a private club. Uh, they do allow guests. They allow guests under the age of 18. Or 21. Um, they have to be accompanied by somebody, and I'm sure you police it and you, you do the best you can. And, uh, but in this particular case, as the chair pointed out, uh, this occurred, did happen, they were served, it's in violation, and 
could be some sort of repercussions for it, I believe. So, if I, if I may speak, speak for a second. Uh, I just want to be very clear. He is not testifying to what he saw. Right? He is not differing from the police officer's report. What he is saying is what someone told him. I would respectfully disagree because we were just told that he had spoken with the detective and the detective assured him that it would be written different than what was presented. That's what he said. He's okay. saying what he heard from the detective, correct. But uh, he's not saying that the facts are different. He, he didn't view them. I think with the chief's many years and with my many years as an attorney, uh, I could leave here right now and in two hours question each of you what exactly I said. There would be slightly different stories. It happens all the time. But this isn't slight. No, this is a police report. And this is not a slight difference. But anyway, yeah. so, so again, I, what, what I, was presented to us this evening was that he was told by the detective that something other than what was reported to us was, was The good. detective told me at the end of the day, as soon as she opened up the bottom of violations, and we all agreed on that. She should have ID'd him first before turning around and opening up that bottle. So we're completely understanding that we violated. Yeah, um, just no way we I don't we did not again when I started this I said I'm agreeing with the report of the police officer. I'm just telling you that some people will have various differences. Did did I have a blue tie on? Did I have a red tie? Is it material at the end of the day? No. Was there a violation? There is a violation. Are we admitting that there's a violation? We're admitting a violation. Whether the server had her hair in a bun or had a ponytail doesn't make any difference. It's the fact that there was a violation and the club. We admit that there was a violation. The police admit there was a violation. I, I, like I said, I don't want to get caught in the weeds. I, I was, we're not saying right now that that, that officer you know, made something up from the whole clock. I'm just saying somebody heard something because it's slightly different. It doesn't mean the essential facts. I mean, were you going over 65? It doesn't matter whether you say, oh, it was 62 or 67. Uh, you know, in 67 or 7, you were going over 65. So the semantics doesn't really matter. What matters is, was there a violation? Yes. Do we admit that there was a violation? Yes. We're not disputing that. I'm going to take an issue with having any error in saying that people that are trained to write these reports and run these sting operations are misrepresenting the report. I'm going to take an issue with that. They have a heightened duty and responsibility when they prepare these reports. So I'm not going to sit here and listen to someone telling you, especially the two people involved, that they were going to write something different up for you. I'm not going to sit here and listen to that because that leads me to check question your credibility. Okay? And I, I know Attorney Hoop and I respect him tremendously. I don't know you as well, obviously, because you're new, but we don't want to interact with you on these types of matters. We don't really want to. serious, serious concern for us, over-serving and serving minors. That's why they do these things. ABCC does it too. Your attorney can tell you that. So I'm going to take an issue with you coming here and saying our people that are trained and under a heightened obligation to be truthful and honest in their reporting requirements with a well-detailed and documented report. I don't need to belabor the point, but that's not going to fly with me in terms of your credibility, and I want to sit here and hear what you have done to correct this. So I appreciate the fact that you did the training after that. You met with Amy Lutzkowitz, who's fantastic. She offers to be a resource anytime you need to achieve is these officers do. They are the people that are going to help you. They are the people that are going to help steer you in the right direction and not tell you they're going to write up a report differently. So I agree. I agree with you. And you, if you were to walk in the club tomorrow, you would see the signs. You would see the change in atmosphere. You would see, again, nobody's disputing the, the underlying fact that this was, was not appropriate and needed to be corrected. Okay. Mrs. Gonzalez. I just want to talk about the fact that um, that the bartender didn't immediately ID before doing anything else. I bartended and served for many years in my youth. Um, it was just habit. That's your habit. It's the first thing you do. Any questions? And I know this is a private place and you've got your regulars and I get that you're not going to ID your regulars that you know but she didn't know them she didn't know who they were absolute habit no excuse for her to not absolutely first ask for ID 
Well, not yeah. even member ID. ID. Well, that's correct. And, uh, as I said, it, it's, I don't know why someone who's an experienced bartender and bartender in, in public place would not do that. But clearly, yeah. there, there was a disconnect there. I, I agree with you completely. So I, I, I would just ask you to make that, drill that policy into your bartenders, even though it's private, and you know everybody, and you, you're going to assume that they're a member and they're 21, don't assume. Right. Don't assume. They've been practicing that afterwards, and members are being very compliant, very understanding. Yeah. If you're doing it. Thank you. Okay, good. <coughs> anything, do you have anything else you wanted to add? No, that's I just okay. want to answer your face questions. Chief, you're all set to. Just so the, the person that did serve, um, any of you know, it is a criminal offense. At this point, we have not filed criminal charges. We thought this would be the best venue to handle this administratively as a learning um, tool at this point. Um, so uh, that doesn't mean that she she can be charged, but at this point, we have not filed charges. Sure, I appreciate that. All right, so Mr. O'Leary has really explained, and, I, and your attorney's been before us actually before, we have a specific, um, we have a specific uh, measure of discipline, I think, that we impose for our first time serving under, under age, which is, is it a three-day suspension? Three days. And then we dictate the dates of that suspension, so do we have a, do we have a motion with respect to that? No. I don't think we named the date yet, did we? Okay. I don't know if there's a specifically prepared motion. Three yeah, it's three oh, consecutive, okay. consecutive days, but. Right. Um, three consecutive days, which would be. But we haven't usually picked the, we haven't picked give the dates. Usually, typically, give the 10 day time frame for, a, for an appeal, I think, or when the notice letter gets out, and then we set up the dates <coughs> for that. Yeah, they have the right to appeal to the ABC. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, we do. It's the three days, right? And three then days. Now. The imposition of the three days is typically done on a weekend, right? Over the course of the weekend, do Mr. O uh, Studo. So one thought I have, though, because it's a first offense, and and you know, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and try to play the what if game of how many times they got to waive it because you, you could do that with anything. I do think that, <clears throat> unlike some others, we should try to avoid anything that would be too financially, uh, you know, like, like that's my thought that like pick them, whatever days we pick, because it's a first offense, it should sting, but it shouldn't, you know, it shouldn't be like a dagger as if this has happened more than once. That I just, you know. I can appreciate that, but that's always brought up by one of us at the times that this has happened, if they're few and far between our policy is to be consistent with it so any deviation from that is a challenge I don't remember specifically but I I do recall the last time we had the this and the time before that was a long time owner was well respected in the community as well and we still did the same we impose the same oh no but what I mean I think that last year which I mean we might be going full circle on I think there was another situation that presented it where because it was because it was like a, a violation that happened again and again, I think we, right. we purposely were trying to make a point. So I'm just trying to say that, in my opinion, for this time around, like you know, there's certain uh, there's certain days that could hurt a lot more than others for a golf course. Okay, uh, it's up to the board. What's the board's pleasure? I don't know if anyone's picked the dates, Mr. Wong. Can I just ask a question? What are, what are your normal operating days, hours? Like, just give us a clue on that, please. Monday, um, Sorry, can you speak up just a little bit louder? Mondays, Mondays, the Monday, there's no, there's no service upstairs, there's service downstairs. There's two licenses. So the grill uh, room is closed, so the restaurant is part. And um, Tuesday to, to Friday, it's uh, 11 to 8. Saturday, it's 11 to 6. And Sunday, 11 to 6. And Sunday's what? 11 to 6. Do you have, um, do you rent a lease out on Monday to tournaments? Yes. On occasion. On occasion? On five to seven. 
Okay. So, and then you only have, that's why you only have like the downstairs for that to serve throughout the event? Yes. Correct. Correct. Most people, uh, we, we try to keep the upstairs open for, for like food and, you know, not everybody, we couldn't survive if everybody just golfed in one day, so we like people to come over and bring the family out and go over mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, so we, you're just fine if nobody's coming up on Monday night. Tuesday night they try to have a golf league, try to get a few people in there, it's just sort of like that. And, and you can see that there, on any night, the latest they're ever open at o'clock, this is not like, people aren't showing up there for drinks and like this is a, uh, have a little dinner or come after golf. So this was served at the grill room and bar. Does that make any difference to you? No, I'm just. Is this the upstairs or the downstairs? That's the upstairs. The grill room and bar, yes, which correct. is open to the public if they're brought in by a member. If they're brought in by a member. Okay. I'm just saying that the reason I asked about the Monday is like if we choose something where one of the consecutive days is on a Monday, I would have consideration. You know, if they told me it was one of the Mondays where they had an event, that's what what I kind of meant, like not to go too far. On it because some of those like events can be, I mean, they can be a good, uh, yeah, I think it's a three day, don't we typically do a Friday, Saturday, Sunday? It depends on the holiday. Again, yeah, we we have been fairly consistent also in that you know, we, we want to drive the point home that uh, you know we have not avoided holidays, let's put it that way. We've not avoided. Okay, so let's have a motion. But we if have to you name a date. You can vote against it. I, I, we have to name a date. So. Yes, we do. So let's take a look at the calendar. So this happened on a Friday. I'm sorry. This happened on a Friday. Yes. Do we have a motion? We, we just need to pick dates because that's part of the motion. Okay. Can I just say something? Just Mr. really quick. Mr. Walner. Yeah, just um, also I'm realizing that people are employed there. And when we shut them down, they don't get to do their normal job. So I'm a little bit also cognizant of trying to be a little bit aware that we're finding a fine line between the two, in my opinion. I'm sure they could work downstairs. Or What's that? There's more places to work. It's, so. Wait, does the license shut down? Upstairs and downstairs? Is it two yes. separate? Yeah, no, the, the, the downstairs, the whole place the ten downstairs is specifically just um, kind of the house. Three, 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 three. They, they, to, be honest, to be completely honest, the people that smoke cigars go downstairs because it's outside under a tent. Okay. So they don't bother people eating. Okay. Okay, so we need to make, we should make findings of fact, but the facts are all agreed upon as, as, as asserted. Um, so let's make a motion. Uh, with regard to this, and then we can deliberate on the motion. Um, we just need to find a date. So 10 days, you said, so we're really into sure. July. Sure. Yeah, so no, really into July. Right 24th, 25th, 26th? Yep. Three days in a row? Yeah, that's after the 10 days. Mm -hmm. And it's before 4th of July, which would be very nice of us. Because we could hit 4th of July right there. I, I just looked at the calendar, so. Um, but I, I can't make a motion. I just suggested those if you, if you wanted to do the following weekend. That's, you know. Go ahead. Absolutely. Let me follow up with you. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, uh, I move, however, I, I motion to uh, for the Thompson Country Club to have their license suspended between uh, Friday March Friday March June. <laughs> Friday June 24th to Sunday June 26th to you know, be back in business on the 27th. Did I say that right? Okay. Three consecutive days. Just plug in the dates. Yeah, well, I just want to okay. get a feel. Do you want to read more formally? Yeah, I can. Yeah, you want to read more right. Mr. Walnut, please read that more formally All right. now that the dates are so good. Looking up at me. Okay, Madam Chair, I move to suspend the, for three consecutive days the seasonal mm -hmm. club wine and malt beverage license of Thompson Country Club to a mid iron drive on uh, June 24th. 
and that the license be delivered to the North Riding Police Department at the close of business on June 23rd. No. Yep. Yes. Yes. Yep. And then picked up at the police station oh, oh, on okay. June 27th. So the motion is actually for three consecutive days, mm -hmm. June 24th, June 25th, June 26th. Yep, so, so drop off the night before, pick up the day. Yeah, the, the opening. Okay, um, well, the motion was made by Mr. Studo, it was seconded by Mrs. Gonzalez, and perfected by Mr. Waller. So mm -hmm. do we have any further discussion on the, Mr. Hoop, uh, would, Attorney Hoop? Would there be any, and I know this is gonna seem absolutely ridiculous, but would be any chance that this board would consider the first, second, third of July? <laughs> I reasoning? Yeah. Well, reasoning there is an outing on the twenty sixth and it would be worse. How many people? Eighty to hundred. I mean it, it, it will, I understand you you want to stay it, it, it's a it's the day if you want, it's a Friday, Saturday, <coughs> excuse me, and Sunday. I just, I'd rather take the sting and take the holiday, lose the holiday, lose the outing. Again, I'm just, just making this. I'm okay with that. Okay. okay. I'm open to it. The motion and a second. If there's an amendment, we need to have right. a motion to amend to be voted on. All right. I move to amend the motion for the suspension to be served consecutively from Friday, July 1st, First. until the end of business, uh, Sunday, July 3rd. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. Walner. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? On the amendment. Uh, on the aye. motion to amend, all those in favor? Aye. aye. All those opposed? Opposed. The motion carries three to two. <coughs> you opposed it? So I I, uh, Mrs. Gonzalez and I opposed it. So the motion to amend carries and on the then on the main motion to suspend to be served July first, second, and third, and to be turned over to the police department. June 30th and to be retrieved from the police department July 4th. On that main motion to suspend. Do we have a motion? You have a motion. Are you going to make your usual statement that the facts are in We did. I just did actually. They were yeah. as admitted in the report. Okay. Yes. I, I, I do usually do that but because that it was already represented that they weren't disputing what was written in the report. I, so we, we already provided a copy of the report. All right, so, so we have that <coughs> motion. Do we have a second? Yeah, you have a main motion as amended, so it's done. Main motion as amended. That's what Who's the second? Second. Motion and a, and a second by Mr. Studo on the amended motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. okay, you made the main motion, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, technically, so, I didn't. So, Mr. Studo made a, mo made a yeah. main motion. To amend the initial motion. And then Mr. Studo suggested an amendment, which was done. So, now the main motion, as amended, which Mr. Studo made, was amended, is what we voted on. Yes, and that counts. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank we you. Thank you. We hope we don't see you again. I know. Yeah. <laughs> the last time you on saw, these terms. The last time you saw me on this, I was applying for a license, so hopefully that's. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Jennifer, did you follow? Jennifer, did you follow that okay? Did you follow that okay? Okay. That was an extra I counted. Next order of business is. It's on you. Yep. That's for sure. Pledge of license, New England Beverage. A vote to approve. We have Attorney Reiser with us. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, Are we waiting? The host would like you to unmute your microphone. You can press star six. You are unmuted.
Should we go Good, evening. Good evening, Madam Please Chair, welcome. members of the board. My name is Jim Rudsier, and I represent Paradise R2, Inc., uh, doing business in the town of North Reading as New England Beverage. And for the board's consideration is a request for approval of the pledge of the license, the stock, and the inventory of Paradise R2. This is all in connection with a commercial loan that has been proposed with Newburyport <coughs> Five Cent Savings Bank. Um, I have attached the, 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 the loan commitment from Newburyport, the proposed uh, promissory note, the proposed security agreement, as well as my client's uh, uh, Department of Unemployment Assistance and Department of uh, Revenue uh, Tax Good Standings. Okay. Um. Pledge of license, pledge of inventory, pledge of soft stock to the very five cent savings bank. It's a fairly routine commercial refinance transaction. I suspect they probably had some financing arrangements uh, uh, that uh, are coming up for a rate reset. And so what they're trying to do is they're trying to set it, uh, commit now for the next five years with new report. I would point out that uh, it looks like uh, the proposed rate is going to be for five years at Federal Home Loan Classic plus 175 basis points, which is um, probably about a point lower than what uh, the rate would have been back in 2017. Okay. Any questions? Mr. O'Leary. No, but it's just, uh, I guess it is just a routine matter. Yeah. It's not the first time that the licensee has come forward and asked us to uh, authorize them to pledge the license. Uh, to secure financing to continue operating their business in the town of North Reading. Okay. They're extremely su successful. I have no problem with it. Mr. Studo? Mrs. Gonzalez? Good rate. Mr. Waller? Mr. Gilberto, anything else we should be aware of? Is this all set to go? None to my home. Okay. Do we have a motion? <laughs> We Are do. you sure? Do we have a motion? <laughs> Madam Chair, I move to approve a pledge of license stock and inventory as requested by Paradise R2, Inc., doing business as New England Beverage, 160 Main Street, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Second. Motion by Mr. Walmer. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Any <coughs> further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Now, just warn your licensee or your client. You don't want to be like the guys who just came in before you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. 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 All right. I think we're moving right in line. We have Mr. Clark here. We're moving on to our next order of business, which is a public hearing on the fiscal year 2023 water rates and capital plan. I have the notice of hearing, which I'll read into the record, the Town of North Reading Department of Public Works meeting notice, water rates and capital plan hearing. In accordance with the requirements of sections 191-16 and 191-17 of the Code of North Reading, the Select Board and the North Reading Water Commission will hold the annual water rate and water system capital plan hearings on Monday, June 13, 2022 at 7.45 p.m. Please refer to the calendar on the town website when the select board agenda for this meeting is posted. To find the venue for the hearing, the calendar may be found at the www.northreadingmass.gov. And this is posted June 2nd, 2022. We're also joined by Mr. Parisi. Our directors are here and we have a presentation. Mr. Clark, tell the truth. You were ready to like present at like 845, right? Not 755. <laughs> so I I'll just make this comment. I, I know you said these are rare and, and far and few in between. This is the third consecutive water rate here where there's been a show cause here just before. <laughs> Mr. Clark, I tried my best. We, we, have, we have I results. tried my best. The Sorry, last time those. But right I appreciate the both of you hanging in here. We all do hanging in here. I've seen a year mistake in the presentation here. It's actually 2022. So. I'm going to take a little bit of time to go through these uh, these slides. So the first slide I always like to go into is look at where are we standing financially relative to our longer term uh, reserve funds. Um, at last Monday's town meeting, we transferred $287,000 into the fund. We also authorized two uh, vehicles or two pieces of equipment to be bought out of the fund for $138,000. 
When we consider the Stickney Fund, which is shown all the way up at the top, there still is some money in the Stickney Fund. And then the uh, Water Infrastructure Stabilization Fund. The total of those are just over three million at this point. I get the question from people, how much money should be in the, the uh, interest rate, in the reserve funds for the Water Department? The only thing, I, I was at a rate, hearing, or a rate seminar back in October, first time anyone ever made a comment about it, and they said there should be one to three months of operating expenses in the reserve funds. We basically have over 10 months of operating expenses in our reserve funds right now. So we're pretty, uh, pretty sound financially when it comes to those reserve funds. And uh, I am gonna make a recommendation tonight to take some money from them. Uh, but we are in a good position right now. Again, they recommend one to three months. We have over 10 months in our reserves. I always like to look at, too, where are we billing-wise this year. Um, if you drill into this table, it looks a little scary. So on the left-hand side, if you look at the year-to-date amount for June, last year we billed for about $4.8 million worth of water. If you jump over to the red line on this year, it's only $4.3 million. That's a pretty significant drop. I will say this. Every year, ever, every month of this year so far, so we're through 11 months, our consumption has been below where it was in FY21, and even this month to date, we're below where we were in June of last year. So a significant drop. We knew this last year. We went to town meeting in June. We had to amend our budget because we knew we were selling so much water. We had such a hot, dry summer in the summer of 2020. We had to go in June and amend our budget, basically, so we wouldn't overexpend the budget in order to pay all the, you know, for the purchase of all that additional water. Um, as I said, we just transferred $287,000 into this fund. That's a reflection of the amount of water sales we had last year. So if you look in that, in that columns at the bottom, projected billing $4.336 million. Water department budget this year is $4.84 million. Again, just looking at those two numbers, it looks like we're in a deficit situation. But that's not the fact. If you look at that second highlighted yellow line, we're going to underexpend the water department budget this year by about $318,000. Primary source of that is the purchase of water. So we're not selling as much water. We're subsequently obviously not buying as much water from Andover. Um, always look at what was the uncollected last year, assuming that gets collected this year, and then what's the uncollected this year. We have to make a projection on that and assume that will be collected next year. Last year we actually had fairly good collection. We were down to about 6.9% uncollected at the end of the year. We've averaged 9 to 10% historically, so being a little more conservative, that's the number I'm assuming for the end of this year. You may say, well, you should be ready to say what the number is. The, the last quarter's water bills aren't due till this Friday, and there are people that wait till the last minute to pay. So if you ask me next Monday, I probably have a better, better handle on what that percentage would be. But when you take all those numbers into account, I'm projecting, and I know this never matches up with what the actual recap is, but I'm projecting we'll have a surplus or a routine earnings, we, know, we hate that word surplus, in the about the $112,000 range for the current fiscal year. Can, can we do questions at sure. one, yes. Mr. Studo? Mr. Um, when you say uncollected, is that is that from like last quarter or like, a, like how in arrears is some of that? So some of that goes all the way back to July 1st of this year. So it's basically this whole fiscal year. Some people don't pay their water bills. For July 1st, 2021. From July 1st, 2021, sorry. So that, that bill, okay. So some, some are like a year in arrears? Yep. So what they will are. happen is uh, approximately November 1st, if anything still isn't, un is still unpaid from this year, we'll lean it to the February 1st real estate bill. So it'll become a lien against the real estate bill. Okay. We're also charging, once they're passed due, we charge 14% interest on the water bill. So um, they're, get, they're, you know, they, they're gathering interest. Um, it tends to be the same customers. If we looked at it and generate a report, it tends to be probably 90% of the people are the same year over year. I'm not sure how they're claiming it on their taxes. And we've sent people notices saying you can't claim this on your taxes. Somebody that's smarter in economics probably has that. <laughs> so what I did want to say, just looking at this slide again, this was a very low sales year, very low volume year. 
we're still generating some level of retained earnings, even in a very low uh, sales year. So it tends to happen. We have an increasing block rate structure. The hotter, drier summers, we sell more water, which means more people are going into that third tier, second and third tier, which tends to generate more money. This year, more people were in, stayed in the first tier. Even in that case, we're at a point where we're generating some retained earnings. So that tells me, at least structurally, our rate system is fairly sound fiscally. So here's kind of where the rubber hits the road. So here's our FY23 budget. Um, if you look at the top, that's kind of the operating portion of the budget, the personnel, and then our expenses. Uh, the purchase of water would be in that purchase of services line item. Police details, laboratory testing, uh, meter supplies, copper for repairing you know, water services. It's all in the top portion of that budget. Bottom line, if you look at that lower right-hand corner of that top table, the 5.1% increase over, that, over FY22. Um, one of the things we're looking at is, I think some of you are aware, I'm, I'm looking at possibly retiring in this coming fiscal year, and there's, we're looking at the potential of adding a half a position to the water department, split one with DPW, kind of look at some of the, some of the, I, I guess, budgetary or financial things I've been involved in on the water side. So that's part of the driver there. The Andover costs, we know they're going up 2.5% from this year to next year. Uh, and we're just experiencing kind of what everybody else is with the uh, supply chain issues and then also that drives into inflating the cost for just the services we're purchasing. So we've been trying to hold the rate increases at about 2.5% a year. The, just the operating portion of the budget this year is driving about a 5% increase. What's kind of more troubling if you look down at the very bottom line where it says debt service and you go to the FY22 column, $621,000 last year in debt service. This is what we pay on the projects we bonded over time. $1.185 million this year. So it's a $563,000 jump in debt services. And I'm going to come back to that. But that's, that's a huge hit for this year. Um, kind of drill into that a little bit right here. So what you don't see here is there's probably 50 columns off to the right of this table that break out the individual projects that we're paying debt on, principal and interest, principal and interest on every single project we have out there. If you look, this the one thing this doesn't include, and this is the numbers are slightly different than the, the page before, it doesn't include the temporary uh, projects that we haven't put to full bonding. But this is what is fully bonded at this point. And really, if you look at the line above the yellow line, 2022, annual debt service on the fully bonded is 584000 It jumps to over $1.13 million. And what you can see is for FY23, FY24, 5, and 6, that number stays relatively elevated relative to where it was in FY22. In FY27, we're kind of back down to the range of where we were in the prior years. So what happens there, what causes it to spike is we've taken on some new projects that hit long-term bond in here. What causes it to drop off is we're paying off some of the older projects. Uh, probably the two biggest ones that we'll be paying off in the next three or four years that cause that to drop. We all remember the water meter project from a few years ago. That will be paid off, I believe, in FY25 or FY26. And then there's an older big project, the construction of our last water storage tank, the Swamp Pond tank. That also gets paid off in the next two or three years. So we have about a four-year window right here where our debt is actually spiked quite a bit. We've been able to hold it relatively steady. Um, it had been up in the $800,000 range at one point. It's come back down to about $620,000 last year, but it's jumped this year. And I'll kind of jump right into what's caused this jump here. Most of you are familiar. Uh, we approved a project for $3 million in June of 2018. It was relative to some water main improvements and also those two chemical feed stations that we're building out behind 303 Main Street and over where our Central Street pumping station is. We had already bar, uh, permanently bonded $500,000 of that. The other $2.5 million, which is the second line down here, hit the, hit the books as of July 1st. And we had two other large water main rehab projects, part of which paid for uh, the main that went up North Street last year, the main that went up Mount Vernon Street, part of which is going to pay for the, the main that we just completed today. I'm glad we finished that. On Main Street today, uh, and uh, we'll look, we just opened bids on a water main that we're looking to replace in Shady Hill Drive. So those are kind of what those are for. 
Um, water distribution system upgrades, we do these, at, we appropriate money every couple of years. This is really to stay out in front of the town road projects. Um, so we had 200,000 for that in the books. And then we approved a couple projects for our water storage tanks last year as well. So overall, if you look down at the very bottom right hand corner again, total new principal and interest, $584,000 hitting the books this year. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. Um, I'm not sure if Mark will cover this, but these are projects that were approved at um, various town meetings prior to last Monday's town meeting. So you will recall that there was, there were uh, five projects that were approved, um, and three of them would be. Uh, borrowed long-term debt service and two of them are to be paid by the water infrastructure stabilization fund so I just want everybody to be aware of that that we continue even though some things fall off new things are gonna come online so. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, so we're not a static system obviously things are changing we've been pretty trying to be pretty proactive ever since uh, Swarm <coughs> Water to hand over try to get ahead of things and stay ahead of things. Um, obviously it's a change in the way water flows through our system where we had you know sources around the system a little bit around the system. Now it's all coming in through two points and uh, you know kind of why we're doing so much water main work, especially in this corner of town, is this is where most of the water comes into North Riding's right down Main Street. So I mentioned we have three million dollars in the infrastructure reserve funds. That's kind of that three million thirty-five thousand dollars in that top line there. That money can be used for two things. It can be used to offset the need for rate increases, and it can be used to pay for capital expenses. Um, what I'm looking at here is, as I mentioned, and this does not factor what Liz was just talking about, but there's a four-year hit where our debt service goes up pretty pretty high. What I'm not. I'm going to make a recommendation that we take some money from the stabilization fund to help offset the need for a rate increase um, due to that spike. But really, if we had to do that each of the next four years, where would we be? And that's what this table attempts to provide information for. for. So uh, that kind of that third column that says debt service funded by uh, the fourth column, debt service funded by reserve fund. Last year we didn't do anything with it. This year. My recommendation is to take about 532,000, and then as you see that number drops down, so that in as we as our debt stands right now in FY27, we really start putting money back into that fund. This does not account for any of those annual uh, recaps where we have last year 287 thousand dollars to put into the fund. This year maybe 112 thousand. So we should generate some money that will be available to go back into the fund if there is no money available and if we do not do any more bonding. Uh, we would still have about $1.5 million in that fund. And again, I put the, it's kind of an odd term, months of operating budget on the end there. So we're over 10 months now. If we follow this plan and it works out as it's shown here, you know, we would have still have over four months in the operating budget at the low point uh, before we started putting money back in. I'll just stop for a minute and see if you have any questions about that. Please. Just e even that I do. Just what I notice here is you're going to recommend the five percent increase with the dip in that that has reflected the five thirty two for this year, versus just doing a higher increase and a lesser amount taken from that. So you usually you give us a variety yeah. of options to So consider. here's your number one option. If you look down at the very bottom corner, it says seventeen percent actually 16.7 percent if we were going to say let's just increase the rates across the board to pay for the budget this year that's what we'd be talking that's what i'd be coming forward with the rate increase 16.7 percent again i don't think i think we have three million dollars we don't have a clear uh plan to spend that money we've put been putting money into it year over year um, I don't think it would be right to ask for a 17% or a 16.7% increase in the water rates, specifically because it's the debt service that's driving it. The operating budget is going up. There's an increment to the operating budget here. But overall, to ask for a 16.7% rate increase when that's going to basically tail off over the next several years, would we be or 
Mr. Parisi be here in four years asking for you to lower the rates 17 percent. That doesn't make sense to me to spike the rates at this point where we have that $3 million. Thank you. And, and I would say this, we're in, as I said, I think at the start, we're in good financial shape right now. Having that much money is not a bad thing. I don't know that DOR at some point might come and say, wait a minute, you've got a full year's worth of operating budget in your reserves. What's your plan to do with that? Are you just banking this money for, for whatever? It, I, I don't think we need to go on ad infinitum adding to that, but I think we have a kind of a situation now that really warrants taking a look at taking money out. So just Mark, just in relation to that 17% increase, so you're talking about 5% increase and in using $500,000. Correct. So 12%, $500,000 represents 12%, right? Plus or minus, yeah. Plus or minus. All right. Okay. If you were, just a quick question, if you were to pay off debt, what would be the strategy and what's kind of the interest rates now that we're paying? Maybe that's more for Liz. So our current borrowing, if you remember, took place first week in May around then, and we had a coupon rate of uh, 4%, um, and they're between 4 and 5 right now. So that's, you know, they're climbing, but things change every day, you know, um, and you know, every quarter or two with the Fed. So I, I can't predict where they'll be next May when we go long term on the items that were approved at this past June town meeting. They could say the same, they could go down, you know, but they, they've been, you know, say 2.5 to 5 in, in my 11 years here, so. I was going to say the last five years it's been <coughs> close to two. Yes. Two, yeah, so, I mean, so, so, so it wouldn't make any sense to pay that off. Pay that off. Right, so what okay. you'd want to do is if you know you have big things coming up, you'd want to save it for that right. if you know that you're going to be paying higher interest rates, right? So um, would that be kind of the approach? I think it probably would be um, not full-on pay from the water infrastructure stabilization fund. I don't think we would want to drain, you know, the whole fund, um, but I would feel, which is what we typically do, is buy uh, or pay cash for shorter borrowing term items for vehicles or tenure items and things like that. A lot of these water main projects, they have a 30 year life, um, so you can borrow that long for them. So that's typically what we would do. You also have the opportunity to do a, a debt refunding if, if rates do dramatically um, decrease. You can, you can do that, basically a, a refinancing. Um, so we do have options. I don't think, like, like Mark was mentioning, we should just take it all at once and pay for one project, because it's taken us some time to build this up. When I first started here 11 years ago, there was a water re retain earnings deficit. So we don't want to be in that position, and I think we need to continue to build reserves. This fund is um, set up that it's a stabilization fund, and it has multiple uh, uses. So it can be used to stabilize the water rates or uh, reduce the amount that the, the burden uh, it also can be to purchase capital items and it can be to pay for debt service, th things like that, so. And Mr. Studer, are you I, all set, Mr. Walner? Yeah, I think so. Okay. It'd be good to know your, your strategy yeah. if you decide to do that. If you decide to use some of that money, it'd be good to know, you know, kind of lay it out. Here's my five-year plan, what we think. Because I would think that your, your need for capital improvements is going to diminish since we're banking a lot of Andover, right? I mean, they're, they're taking a lot of it themselves. So I would think that our needs would go down over time, I would suspect. So we definitely don't have the capital input or the, the maintenance on the old uh, water treatment plants. You're right, you're right. So certain things, it's more <coughs> distribution related uh, items. Yeah. Maintain your storage tanks, but then it's you know, water mains that we really need. So in part of what we proved in June was to take a look at our water system. Now that we're gonna get all our water from Andover for the foreseeable future, another six years maybe. <laughs> um, what do we need to do in the distribution system? Yep. To address. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Strudel has a question. Um, you. you know how you mentioned that you didn't recommend that huge increase because a lot of it's the debt service, not so much operating budget, but that doesn't mean in the future it couldn't be, right? And the only reason I say that is because it is highly unlikely that in the next 24 months borrowing costs are not going to be sharply higher. There was a half a point move just today. One day. That, that doesn't happen. That's not good. So I only say that in the future we may, for capital improvement budget or anything else, so, but at that point, I mean, you, you are allowed, though, to do that, right? Increase to take into account if there's a sharp increase in borrowing cost. Correct? Okay. So. Yes, um, that's correct. Also, just a question, too. Is it, um, maybe this is just an operational thing, but if it happens like mid-year, right, in between meetings where it's like appropriated or voted on by town meeting, that is there, this is just, where does that come from? Like if, if, if all of a sudden something dramatically happens where you need to, you know, all of a sudden it's like, oh, maybe we should have done a bigger increase. Do you just borrow from somewhere, like within the budget? How, how does that work? Maybe that's so just a... We, we have done mid-year rate increases in the past. It, you know, there's nothing that says we have to meet in June and set rates for next year, and that's all we can do. Okay. We're not setting them, saying this is it for 12, 12 months. We're setting the rates. If something dramatic happens, if we have a, say one of the storage tanks falls over, we have some money here to help with that, but you know we would obviously look to go long term with a project like that. Something super dramatic like that. I just asked like what the contingency would be because I think, again, um, we would find a very different interest rate regime at that point, like right now, like if we did the same thing, and it could be high to the point where you know to because I do agree that uh, that. Um, that building up of that reserve is really helping us out. And like, it's something where, you know, I mean, debt service could really wipe that out if, it, if it's high enough for something that came out of left field. So, but thank you. Just a Mark, what, uh, has the end over gone up two and a half percent? Because we're tied to whatever they do to everybody else up there. So I was a little hesitant to bring this up, but ultimately, uh, why, 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 <laughs> why are we looking at FY27? Why don't I keep going with this? So we're getting a, uh, Part of when we were looking at MWRA, we negotiated a deal with Andover to get a 10-year credit on our water bill Correct. to pay back that. We also negotiated into it a 10-year maximum 2.5% per rate year rate increase to North Ready. If that were to go away this year, there would be, I believe, like a 7 or 8% makeup to get us up to 95% is the other definer. So they couldn't raise our rates more than 2.5% a year and we can't pay more than 95% of their tier one rate. Right now, their tier one rate, 95% of their tier one rate is about seven or 8% above what we're paying based on the two and a half. The two and a half has actually been limiting it. So we need to have this conversation too, because in FY28 or 29, those- That was gonna be my next were. question in relation to the year. Your chart up here as far as the fiscal years, because I know that 10 years are gonna run out, and I know the cap is going to run out. So and they, at they, what point, you know, so as far as rate stabilization for us, um, we need to take that into account so that in year 10, uh, we don't get hit with a, a huge shock, because it shouldn't be a shock. Yeah. The only shock is that you're leaving, I guess, you're retiring. And you know, if we can talk you out of it, that's great. Based on what Mr. Studo said, I might have reserve the right to keep working. There you go. <laughs> no, because, if you get, because again, the historical understanding and knowledge of the budgeting for this is, is key. Because again, as Mr. Clark pointed out, you know, we negotiated as part of this 99-year deal with Andover, a cap for 10 years, the payback of $15 million to us for our costs that we expended for MWRA, the 10-year payback on that. Those are going to disappear all the same year. And they actually disappear one year apart yeah. from each other, but one of them's worth ninety-five thousand dollars a year is right. the, the flat payback, and then the two and a half percent, unless they start having rate increases less than two and a half percent annually in handover, there's going to be a make a makeup here. And right we're, now, you we're benefiting from that right now. Right, Maybe we're benefiting, but we have to factor in on our rate every year to make that up, so there's not a shock 
in one year, and then we're going to have to deplete our reserves over a three or four year period to stabilize the rates and still bring them up in order to pay our bills. So, uh, you know, we have to find a comfort level. Three million shores is probably more than we need, but we're going to need some of that to stabilize the bills after year 10 and 11 and ease ourselves into whatever they're doing up at Andover to their own residents. So, yeah. so uh, right now you say that we're, well, we're ahead of the game, we're actually behind. We're saving money, but at the fact that there's going to be a correction at some point in the future. Yeah, so I, I think that's what's important to make the board aware is that as that correction grows, I mean, if they're going up you know, three, four percent, we're only going two and a half, you know, on the lowest tier customer. We've got to make that up eventually. We're just prolonging that jump. Right, so that, you know, we can enjoy it now. Um, but we need to factor it in. As Mr. As Mr. Walmer said, you know, hopefully some of the major capital projects are going to be going away. Part of the reason we asked for that 10-year, 2.5% window was provide more rate stabilization for North Reading as we went through this transition. And I think it's, it's working to do that. We're just going to have to really take a hard eye on that as we go forward. This is going to be probably another hour or something. Yes. I'm not going to beat this to death. This is just the indirect cost. So if you go through the warrant for the town meeting, you'll see every line. Well, all these lines have water taken out of water revenue, or money taken out of water revenue. It's basically going to the fact that we're a water enterprise. All these other departments in town uh, support us. We don't have our own collections people. We rely on the, ta the tax collector. The finance director, the town administrator, all provide support to the water department. And we're just trying to account for that here. We've been doing this. We basically increase this number by about 2.5% a year. So there's 511,000. If you went through and added up underneath all those lines in the uh, in the warrant, the operating budget, that's 511,000. We just like to say this for uh, so we're not hiding anything. And then this is my recommendation relative to the rates. This re reflects a 5.0 percent uh, rate increase across the three tiers from the current fiscal year rates. So the Numbers of what they are, the first year is nine dollars and fifty-three cents per thousand gallons. It jumps to ten dollars and one cent per thousand gallons. <coughs> I did just want to go into real quickly kind of a rate impact analysis. So what is this going to do to homeowners? First I looked at a low volume customer. Uh, this is what I know to be a single gentleman living alone in his house. You could think of the little old lady living alone. They spend uh, they're in the first tier for all all four quarters of the year, no question about that. Um, <laughs> no, I their, their bill would go up, the total aggregate for the year would be about under $10. Um, why is it 4.6%, why isn't it 5% if we're going up 5% on the rates? Built into each of those quarterly bills is a $5 flat fee. So it's $20 in year 2022, it's $20 in year 2023. At the low volumes, that tends to knock the 5% down just slightly, so it's 4.6%. Next one, they jump in just into the, the second tier. It's kind of a, a typical family situation. Um, obviously, fairly consistent water use throughout the year. They're not watering outside. Again, their bill jumps from about 437 to 458 a year, about $21. Okay. So this is without any outdoor work. This is no irrigation or anything like, like that. These people are not. So the first one is definitely not. It's just a single guy living alone. Second one is a family, no irrigation. Kind of the third and fourth examples, uh, one of these might look similar, familiar to someone here, but uh, the, the third one is somebody who was establishing a lawn in the uh, summer of last year. So if you look at his February and his May bills, <laughs> fairly low. His uh, November bill is about double that, and then his August bill was about triple that volume. So you can see what it does to somebody that does do some, and this was actually fairly moderate in August and November, uh, outdoor watering. Um, American Water Works says use 90,000 gallons a year as kind of your average uh, homeowner's use. This guy, I won't mention his name, is using 98,000 gallons not, last year. But, uh, you know, 90,000 gallons would represent about a $60 per year increase in the water bill. So for most people in North Reading, we're probably talking that $20 to $60 a year increase if we go up 5%. And then I just picked the person that, that watered the highest in August. Um, 
on me. Very big, very big August water bill, almost three thousand dollars just for that quarter. Um, I think you get the message because his November bill and then his February and May bill were very low, and very consistent. <laughs> but uh, you can see what it would do to him. Um, over two hundred thousand gallons a year, his bill will go up by about one hundred and seventy-eight dollars if we do the five percent. And again, as you get into higher bills, they really tend to that. He's probably at four point nine nine seven percent. They tend to the five percent because that five dollar quarterly bill kind of gets washed out in the three thousand dollar usage bill. And I just wanted to do this. Look, we went, we made a decision not to go to MWRA. Were we smart not to go to MWRA when it comes to looking at the rates? And this is kind of where we were, where we are, and where we might have been. Um, the numbers in the MWRA are kind of what we were projecting as we were considering making that transition. If you look at the cumulative rate, if we adopt a 5% rate increase tonight, we'll have a total of about 33.9% uh, since 2016. If we had gone to MWRA, that number would have been a little bit more than doubled. It would have been almost 70%. Yes. Um, so the question, were we wise not to go with the MWRA? Uh, to me, the numbers speak for themselves. MWRA does tend to have about a 4% per year increase in their water rates. Andover tends to be about 2.5%. Uh, even less than that if we look further back. But I think going forward, yeah, the Andover decision, is that those numbers are going to separate even more. So that I think it's going to be a wiser decision to have uh, gone to Andover, stay with Andover rather than go with MWRA. So just to go back, my recommendation to the board is to do a 5%, 5.0% across the board rate increase and then to approve us looking to the stabilization fund for that $532,632. Thanks, and Mr. Clark. Clark. Let me ask, because it's a public hearing, and we have members in attendance, we're the only ones here in the room, I believe. Let me just ask if there's anyone joining the meeting remotely, if anyone has any questions for Mr. Clark or Ms. Parisi. If you could raise your hand or... Abby's got her hand up. Abby. Uh, Mrs. Hurlbut. No, that's just a, that's a, that's a cursor. Oh, that's a cursor. <laughs> okay. Change your cursor. Another computer. All oh, right. Okay. All right. Now. <laughs> yeah, it looks Abby like... Abby put her hand down. <laughs> okay. And do you see anyone in the chat room? I don't. Okay. And then I think I can close that portion. And do the members have any further questions? Mr. Walner. Just one question. Um, is there any benefit to, to working on conservation of water as it relates to Andover? Like, should we, as a long-term plan, be still trying to convince homeowners to reduce water usage? Is, I mean, it's like you pay for your own, I guess. But is there any benefit at all that we should be thinking about that? So th there are benefits in terms of if we start really pushing the envelope, and I'm given, it's more of a public safety benefit. We need to maintain so much water in our storage tanks in order to have fire protection in case there's a major flood fire in the middle of the summer. What we've seen in the past and why we adopted more stringent water restrictions is primarily driven by that. We see the tanks drop by two feet a day, but if we get 10 or 14 consecutive days in the 90s, that means we're 20 or 30 feet down in our water storage tank. So rather than need, uh, make huge capital improvements to try to address that, conservation can help. Uh, okay solve that. Conservation is always a double-edged sword for water departments because the more you conserve, the higher you have to make the rates. You have a lot of, water departments have a lot of fixed costs, you have to, and if you can spread that over a greater volume, it tends to help the, the rates stay low. So you can see community after community that really push water conservation, then they had to raise the rates. So you're using two-thirds of the water you once did, but your water bill is still the same. That doesn't feel very satisfying. People don't like that. <laughs> yeah. I can understand that. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Have we any further discussion about it, or do we have a motion? I can make a motion. Madam Chair. I just Chair. have one quick question. It just as a follow follow up on what we talked about, the rates changing six years from now or whatever. When are we going to factor that in? Next year, I think, I think we should take a look at it and definitely, uh, you know, come up with a long range plan. We're kind of this recommendation is probably coming on some of you 
fairly quickly tonight to take water from the uh, or money from the stabilization fund. But I think we need to start taking a look at that and factor that in now. Um, obviously, we don't have control on what Andover does between now and the time those no. disappear. But we can see what they've done since we've signed the deal and what it's done also, though. And again, last year, obviously, it was a low usage year because we had very wet July. Um, yeah. But, which again, as you say, they have fixed costs up there, which are pretty high. Um, and we help subsidize. It's a good that was deal. Our argument. That's right. It's a good time. deal. Um, <coughs> But again, I, I do really think sooner rather than later we need to uh, put um, this together to do that. I agree with you, Mr. Earlier. I don't think we can sustain this at two and a half or even three. It's just not su sustainable. Otherwise, we're going to have a 16, 17, 20 percent increase down the line. Uh, Ms. Rowe? Yes. Um, so we spoke. Uh, collaboratively today going over this presentation and you know what we can do in the future and how we really should be looking at the water rates so it is um, exactly to uh, select board member O'Leary's point that we have to look at some long-range plans we have to look at um, capital that will be being requested and look further than just a five-year capital plan especially for water you know, a 10-year plan, the best that we can, the best estimates. We can then project some debt service, factor in, you know, inflation rates and things like that. We can factor that into the fixed cost. We, we can, you know, do some different scenarios to see exactly where we will be in eight to 10 years and what the recommendation for a rate increase then would be our best estimate. You know, if anything, we should, you know, start July 1st looking at a five-year plan and then move on to, to continue on. And to a point that um, Select Board Member Walner mentioned earlier, you know, looking at the rates, looking at borrowing, looking at should we pay cash for items, and I think that that um, it gets all discussed internally and also through the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. So we do look at all of that. We do look at um, the long-range plans. We look at debt service, uh, you know, projected debt service statements. So there are different factors that we can look at and um, present to to the board um, some different estimated scenarios of where things would be going. We should do that now. But yes, as now. July 1st, and, and again, you know, the, it, it's, it's not to just the future when the rate changes significantly with the lack of payback on the NWRA costs and the 2.5% fact that we know is going to change within five years, five, six years, five years more than right? year. But anyway, uh, we know that. And then, you know, our infrastructure costs Again, they're going to be decreased because we're not talking about a plant here, but again, are you going to take <coughs> down one of the water towers? Are you going to have to maintain some other ones that have been around for a while? And you know, what do we have for major infrastructure improvements that need to be made? So, uh, and I know we're tackling that already, which is great. Uh, but, I mean, we get the water to us, and now it's a question of can our system sustain it, and it's going to need any additional growth within the infrastructure. So, But anyway, what's in front of us is, is clear. You know, we're looking five years, something different, significantly different. And we did hear from Mr. Gucci, too, recommending, <coughs> you know, that they did meet with regard to it and all, you know, individually look at it, our uh, water commissioners, and recommend that we vote and approve what Mr. Clark and Mr. Crazy are recommending here. Madam Chair, I move to approve a 5% increase in water use rates effective July 1, 2022. Second. Motion by Mr. Walmer, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you so much for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the intro. <coughs> the planning. The planning of this. That was definitely my goal. Yeah. The third Actually, one? we want you to That was my goal. That was a double-edged sword. I think he was talking for the about record. Anthony with that second no. guy. I know you, you were the first one. No. <laughs> I'm the third. 
I, I, I have an in-ground irrigation system that had been broken for 15 years. I fixed it last year. I ran it. I couldn't believe how big my water bill was. And let me tell you something. Water. Hold on. I was like, Hold I'm going to break it Rich, I got, I got news for you, too. Because of how July was, the, the rain sensor probably got triggered. Like, that was my, well, since it's in the open now, that was my bill. But literally. Is that really you? Yes, the third example. And yes, it was. That's what his joke was. I knew right away. But that was my bill with all that rain where the irrigation only ran like five times in all of July. The year before, I'll be honest, same exact kind of like uh, setup, but it ran more. The bill was double. Double. Wow. Oh, yeah, no. If July is, if, if, let me tell you something, Rich. If July is dry, you got, you're going to have sticker shock. Oh, my God. I did last year just doing it for a month. I was like, I wish I hadn't fixed it. I should have stuck with my 15 year breaking plan. All right, I, I think we're ready for our next order of exciting business tonight. We have with us for a performance, we have the North Reading Middle School Harmonics, full disclosure. Among these singers is my child, my <laughs> Michael is here. <laughs> Thank you for having so us this welcome. for this evening. Um, my name is, is Carla Lister. I am the proud director of this amazing group. We started this group three years ago, right before COVID. Matter of fact, we had our first rehearsal the day before we all went to lockdown on March 13th. And, um, and all the eighth graders, raise your hand, all the eighth graders that are here were actually part of that group. And they started meeting me right away on Sunday before we even started up Google Meets for the school. Like within two days, they started meeting me and working on music and, and continue to sing. So just this eighth grade group is an incredibly special group of students we're sending out to the high school next year. And they've been wonderful mentors to our amazing seventh grade, raise your hand. And our sixth grade, raise your hand. We are happy and excited for them for their next journey on to the high school and we're excited to be here to celebrate them and everything they've done. This group helps me arrange the music. They do all their own choreography. So you don't see their choreography tonight, but as far as, well, I know. Come on, kind of dance it out. It doesn't usually look like this. But we are performing on Thursday night at 6.30 at the t Middle School Talent Show that's going on. So you'll see several people. We have Caitlin who's performing at the talent show, and Riley who's performing at the talent show. Am I missing anybody? Victoria. Victoria, yeah, Victoria's performing at the talent show. So you can come and join and watch them perform. Um, and then our acapella group continues at the end. So uh, Michael, you want to finish up for me? We should and introduce you too, by the way. This is Mrs. Carla Lister, who is one of our key players in the music program at the middle school. So we have a wonderful, amazing music program that adds so much enrichment to the students' lives and to the parents' lives and to the public's lives in our school system. So we're very lucky to have you and you so your other cohorts. Yes, right. <laughs> right. Thank you. Mr. Owens, Mr. Kane. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so introduce for, yourself. Right. I'm Michael Lady Pelle. I've already known that. Um, we're gonna be singing two songs today. We're gonna be singing Home and I Live. Home has a soloist, Matthew Mulcahy, me, and Eliana Rainey. Then we're gonna be singing I Live with soloist Riley Mick. Do, do, do. 
gentlemen, I just can't. Thank you so much. We didn't, these students didn't start rehearsing till the very end of March. And of course, we had April vacation in the middle of that. Their first performance was on April 13th for Sing Fling, where they put together within literally three rehearsals, they put together a song and they went out there and they just lit the world on fire. Actually, uh, they kind of showed up a lot of the high school groups that were there performing also. Um, they set that bar so incredibly high for everyone else following them. Um, and I selfishly am taking every advantage I can to get them out there and perform before my eighth graders are gone in the next five days <laughs> on high school. And although I'll see them, they're, they're not mine anymore. They're the next stage of their performing career, which is so exciting. But Thank you for giving us this opportunity to be here and performing for Thanks you for tonight. We Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you very much. So Thank, Thank you. Have a Thank wonderful you. summer. I propose you come to all our meetings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Best meeting ever. <laughs>
through you, Madam Chair. We have been in this agreement for a number of years, as you know from previous budget hearing presentations. Uh, the most notable thing here, um, and the reason it's before you, other than the term having expired, is that the Town of Reading is now pursuing using a consultant rather than an employee to perform the service out of the office. So we modify the agreement to allow for that to, to happen. Um, the town planner is here uh, on Zoom uh, if there are any additional questions, but it is both her uh, and my recommendation that we will go to approve it to sign the IMA. Sure. Questions? Do, do I get just uh, annual cost benefits to date? Would we anticipate for benefits moving forward? Should we? Does do you have the answer? Or do you want Ms. So I can answer the cost, which is fourteen thousand five hundred dollars uh, annually. And I believe that was what was submitted um, for the budget process by the planning commission. Mm -hmm. But I will defer to the planner to talk in a little bit more detail about exactly the services provided under the uh, the IMA. Danielle, can you hear us? Um, I can. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, so the the services that we received through um, this, uh, the regional office um, have, has been very helpful. Um, they provide a lot of support for helping us to track our affordable housing inventory. Um, they help us to keep track of compliance. Um, we have a monitoring agent for each one of our affordable projects, um, but this provides services in terms of monitoring that monitor to be sure that they're um, doing everything that uh, they're obligated to do and that we are obligated to do. Um, they help us with every time something comes up, like a refinancing of an affordable unit or a resale of an affordable unit. Um, they've helped us, you know, help support us for, you know, writing grants or, you know, getting additional, um, you know, funding for, for housing projects, like the housing production plan we did a few years ago. Um, and they will, pro they will provide support with individual projects as needed. Um, so it has been very, very helpful. It's also a really nice, um, collaborative sort of office where we meet monthly and, um, you know, we, we learn from each other's projects and we have a consultant to, or a staff person always to, to go to to ask questions about, um, you know, various projects or issues that they come up. Just so are we going to be receiving the same number of hours and assistance um, with, through this consultant uh, as we were through the town of Reading? Yes, actually, I think the, the scope of the services the consultant um, will be able to offer us is expected to be greater. The reason that all the communities agreed that we would like to pursue the consultant model was because we felt a little bit limited by having one staff person um, attend to all of the work. We had the benefit of a very part-time, like four-hour-a-week consultant, and that was helpful. But we really liked the idea of going to a firm that really was a, a bigger, you know, more full-service type of firm where there were multiple staff. And we really felt we could get a, a bigger variety of services. Um, and yes, the amount of the, the number of hours um, would not be decreasing. Um, just the, the 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 scope of the services we expect to get and the breadth of the knowledge um, we 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 feel would, would be better for the whole country. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? I have one. Danielle, the consultant is the consultant. Is the consultant's name Core Housing Services, or is that just a list of what the consultant is going to be doing? Just a list of what the consultant will be doing. Um, there is no consultant that's listed in the agreement, per se. Um, the Town of Reading has gone through an RFP process, and we're in the final stages of um, selection. Um, but no, those, those core services are the services that uh, the consultant offers, and you know it, it describes um, you know, basically the that we had. Do you have any idea, though, who the consultant is going to be? I do. Um, the There was one respondent to the RFP with Amher Associates. Um, they're a national firm. They have a presence in a number of uh, cities, and um, the, the group interviewed them a few weeks ago and were, were very happy with um, their qualifications. Were you able to sit in on the interview, Danielle? Yes, I participated in that. Okay. All right. That's great. Any other questions? Good. We're, do we have a motion? 
We do. Madam Chair, I move to approve and sign the Intermunicipal Agreement for a Common Regional Housing Services Office. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner. <coughs> Second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. McKnight. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Danielle. Okay, next order of business is a show cause hearing. We need to vote to schedule a show cause hearing for Lucky Mark. Tell us, Mr. Gilberto, uh, were they part of the sting as well? They were, uh, through you, Madam Chair. Um, the information came in shortly uh, after we received the information regarding Thompson Club. Um, we are recommending that the board schedule Lucky Mark for a disciplinary hearing at the next meeting. Um, you and I will need to work through and determine the time in regard to that. I can tell you that uh, the, the item that comes to mind that will likely be on that agenda will be um, wastewater, uh, assuming things go uh, as, as planned, but um, that won't be known for sure. So. Okay. And, um, and that's the only thing that comes to mind that will be on that agenda. This is definitely their third violation? Fourth. fourth. This will be their fourth. 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 Chair. Their yeah. fourth. fourth. Since 2019. Yeah. Fourth. Okay. All right, so our next, so you want to call them in, notice, notify them to come in at our? July 11th. July 11th. And I prepare the motion accordingly. All right, any this, other questions? Did they, they surrender their license? Uh, I believe they're, they've, they're offering that they may, is my understanding, secondhand. They may be able to surrender or forthcoming, but I don't believe it's been returned to our office. Okay. Maybe if they receive the notice letter for the hearing, they might do that. Was it, did we, I forget this, but did we hold a portion of their suspension and abeyance? Uh, or is that time gone? No. Am I thinking of? Did they serve? Madam Chair, three. So there were two violations back to back in 2020 and 2021, December and January. Yes. Okay. It was a five day suspension. I believe a 30 day suspension. 21 days. 21 days. 21 days. 21 days. Mm -hmm. And they served both of those? They did. Okay. All right. Okay, so shall we? Do we have a motion or is yep. there any other question? No. Okay, we just Madam, got Madam saying these weren't coming up too few and far between, and <laughs> we're having two in a row. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to schedule a show cause hearing for Smokes and Snacks Incorporated doing business as Route 28 Lucky Mart, 202 North Street for Monday, July 11, 2022. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 So we'll have them in next meeting. Next order of business is public comment. Does, is there anyone joining us or here that wishes to speak in public comment? <coughs> Seeing none, we'll move on to the next order of business, which is to review the proposed approval not required ANR plan for town owned land, map 8, parcel 196, 12 Audubon Road. Mr. Magazoo is here, and, and Mr. Brown? Is that Mr. Yeah, Brown? You, he was here in case I couldn't make it. Well, he got to see it perform. I know, you missed the show. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I heard it. Tough act to follow. That's right. <laughs> so. but he was prepared if I didn't. Right, I had to say, he's good. the song and dance man. <laughs> that, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so they know you. Yeah. Okay. Karaoke. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so you have a presentation, right, Mr. Gilberto? For two slides, yes, manager. That's great. <clears throat> Two slides tells the whole story. Uh, the plan uh, before you 
uh, was prepared uh, as a result of a previous meeting in which Mr. Magazoo was here where we discussed uh, his interest in acquiring a portion of land on the Audubon Road and number eight Audubon Road. The, uh, the request was uh, for the ability to purchase the land and the board's response uh, had been take a look at the land, we issued a license. I actually issued a license to Mr. Magazoo and his uh, consultants and they looked at the property in the fall and I think maybe early spring um, of this year. It took longer than we expected. I think I think we had this meeting one time. It was a fall, at least. Yeah, it was a while ago. Uh, but nonetheless, I think it was summer. <laughs> nonetheless, uh, he has provided a plan here, which I have put up on the screen, which shows you the portion of uh, land that uh, he is looking to acquire. So he uh, has, my understanding is he has an uh, agreement to purchase the property identified as 12 Audubon Road. So no, I own that. You now own it. I think at one point. I've, I've owned it for years. We pay taxes on it. Let's, if we, if we, I, I want to make sure we're not going <coughs> back and forth like this, I'm okay? Good. So I'm when we're sure. ready to ask you questions, I'll recognize you and I'll recognize the members that may want to have questions of you. But um, Mr. Gilbert, if you could just back up a minute just to refresh our memory. Did the board actually take a vote to sell this land? Um, I don't believe so. We're going back, to, it would be back three years if we did at this point, not four. Three years. So we we did not actually vote to to sell this land yet. It was a request to consider sale of the land. There was a, re a re there was a request to split the land and actually sell it, but I, I don't. I'd have to go back and look at what the last vote was. The, the last time we discussed it, we did not want to sell the entirety of the parcel. Okay, and so what we're talking <coughs> about considering this evening um, is the parcel with the dot in it? The parcel to the left that says portion of map 8 parcel 209 goes to oh, be purchased. Oh, I'm sorry. And Mr. Magazoo, you own that other portion, 12 Audubon Road, right? Okay. The that one with the dot in it, I'm sorry. That right? is correct. Okay. Did, at the last meeting, you asked me to just, and you voted on it, to go to an engineer and get 10,000 square feet engineered out. Okay. That, that is what, what I did. Previously, and that was because you didn't want to give up all the square footage that you originally promised to, to sell. So, yeah. If the town is still in that situation where they can't give up that square footage, the whole thing, I'd, I'd still like to buy the whole, whole, whole thing with this and the closure and do what we originally said, but if the issue still stands with the town, that it would be a liability to the town to do the whole thing we understand. But if, if, if not, to be addressed in the I think that's what I, why I was asking to just refresh my memory. This precedes some of the, I believe, some of the members that were on the board. But on, in looking at that entire parcel between Audubon, the private way, and Parkview, <coughs> did we ever actually take a vote to convey it? Yes, you did. You may have prior to the, the instance of prior to the case involving the glam calculation. I don't remember that. That's why I'm asking that. Mr. O'Leary, do you remember? Yeah, I, we were going to the whole thing. There was a couple of parcels around the Cozier's on the opposite side of Audubon Road, as well as the larger parcels on the northern side there, the top of the picture. And we voted, yeah, put it out there. It was a request by Mr. Magazoo and Mr. Nicosia expressing an interest in it. Thought it was a good idea get it back on the tax rolls, and there wasn't any potential uh, municipal use for it. And then we had the uh, 40B application Correct. that came in, and the GLAM concerns associated with that. Uh, we determined that we would sell the Nicosias, I think a couple of small slivers on their side of the road, which I think has transpired already. And then we sent Mr. Magazoo back to the drawing board to say, What do you need to? to effectuate a, a septic, a, a legitimate se septic system uh, for the parcel that he already owns. Um, and he has gone and done the engineering at our request, 
back with what is needed to to effectuate what he's looking to do, and he's back having met our request. All right, that now thank you for that. I I'm, now it's coming back to me. This isn't the road that has the cliffs. Yes, oh yes, it is. yes it is. It is oh, the yeah. road with the cliffs. <laughs> And so you weren't asking to acquire it for that purpose of building a house on it. You were just no. asking to acquire it for purposes of, Privacy. because you were going to have to, no, it had something to do with the so way you had to, build what type of septic you could build. Right. Is yeah. It, I could put now I remember septic that. To, yeah. to the side of the to wood frame. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You, now you can already build. Back. You can already do it, but this, yeah. this yeah. makes it right. better. This, this, far as this validates that I can build without that land, yeah. but does it make it a... Yeah, so we decided we didn't want to do the whole thing, yeah. but give him well, enough that he could get that done. Get the septic system I don't done. think yeah. we can just sell it to you, though, no, because we yes, have to... Bit, right. Because we, we own to the middle of the road, right. and on the adjacent side, those people own to the middle of the road, so it has a value to them, too if they wanted to acquire it, because they could acquire it right across and, you know, basically, basically expand their own parcel too, even though it's clipped, right? So, right, there's no real, there's only a little slight pavement there to access your house, right? Is that what? I no, the, the, the pavement goes bought by my house to, to where the U is, see where it's at. You. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. The, the you and Audubon. Oh, okay. So even further than what's depicted yeah. there. Yeah. Well, it says end of page. I, I think so. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. It's it's not. That's that's the kosher. It's oh. uh, yeah. It goes to about the A. Then your engineer is incorrect. So. All right. <laughs> no, that's still a paper road all the way through. No, but he's saying end of, on mine it says end of pavement right at that where it's depicted, which is kind of like a little, you know, a little rectangle a little after y'all lot. Mr. Mr. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah. This is a hill. And the, the Show very, me what's the hill part. The very though. top of the hill is the paved area, is my understanding, Mr. Magazine, is it right? Like right up here, we're at the top of, of, a, of a hill. You can, you can actually see, see the line there on the Right there? Uh, to your left, to your left, to your left, to your left. Right there, right there. Mm -hmm. See that line? Mm -hmm. That's the end of the paper. No, I, I know. What I'm but saying is the where the hill. slope there's, there's, oh, starts. The hill, yeah. the, the hill is probably another 30 feet beyond that. Okay. And it Those drops things. off. Yes. You couldn't traverse it precipitously. And it's an oh, unimproved see. dirt road on this side, I believe. I see. Right. Okay. So there's access from two sides. I see. But you okay. can't connect to the two, not by vehicle. Can you yeah. drive up the other side? To, yeah, you can, okay. And now I'm remembering. I'm and sorry. This has been so long. Actually, that side of Audubon is swamp. So it's before COVID. Yeah, you, you're up high, and then you go down into the wetlands, and then you come back up again. Right. All right. Okay. All right. So any, besides me, any other questions? I think I now I, ended, I, I remember this. Okay. So any questions? Any thoughts? Any motions? Any any he, anything? He, he did what he had when we exactly. asked him to do, and now he has to go before the planning commission right. to get approved. If we're inclined to sell it, I, I, I yeah. have an A, a and R. Basically, right. not now it is you put it out for bid. Right. We're yeah. going to put it out for bid. Right. Yeah. So that's what we're voting. Are we voting on that? Everybody, no. let's go through the chair, okay? Let's Sorry. talk through the chair. All right. Sorry. That's all right. Yes. So we'll get the process from Mr. Gilberto on. If we if we vote on this right now, it seems like Mr. Magazu has gone back to the drawing board at least three times for us because of our change of mind on some of this stuff. So, Mr. Gilberto, thank what you, do you have to add to this discussion? And thank Just you for blowing that up. Sure. So this is a closer view, as you can see yes. there, of the property. Um, Mr. Magazu, you think we're asking for 10,000 square feet? We asked you to go back with as the smallest piece you could. You could buy from us to make yeah. it work. Is that, is that what this is? That's correct. That, okay. In the meeting that, you know, we said 10,000, 10, you know, I think I originally said 15, and then Mr. Leary said, can you sell for 10? And then I said, that's right. <laughs> and my only other oh, question, and it's more of a general question, you know, this is one where there's obviously going to be 
you know, a, a value to the property there. We customarily are selling these parcels for the cost of the transaction and leaving it at that, usually. Is, is that the board's desire with regard to this? Do you want us to better understand what a value might be on it, since it's a little unusual compared to what we normally do? That, that exercise we have not gone through. We wanted to make sure that the size was acceptable first. All right, so we need to determine the size, and then we need to determine the process, because it definitely is totally different than someone who has a built house already. I'm building it to sell it. And this has a value also to the people. Even though it's a hill, it has a value to them as well to add to their parcel. So it's potentially could be bid on by almost everybody along that road. Absolutely. Um, but the parcel itself that you carved out, you can't build a house on that, right? That is correct. Unless it's like a glass ledge or something, right? No. <laughs> is that it, it, right? It's, it's all sand. But regardless, oh, oh, okay. it's all right. the code goes, is uh, 1978. It has to be separate but since 1978. Okay. All right. Anyone else have any questions on that? What's the board's uh, thought with respect to um, this carving this out, this amount out? It's a... Uh, Madam Chair? Mr. Yes. So I'm not to prolong and confuse No, but that's, but that's... As I'm remembering back, do, do, we may have asked if you were interested in the parcel on the other side as well, which we also own. Does that, the, is that right? Right. The town owns it. Yeah. You would ask me to buy it. I was willing to buy it. Okay. But then the square footage was a concern to yeah. you. Mm -hmm. And giving out the square footage, if you want me to go out. Uh, what, what you need is only, you only need what's to the left. Is that, that is correct? correct. Okay. So we, we wouldn't want you to buy it because we want to maintain Correct. That was that percentages. Was why, percentages is what our right. limitations. That's why was. we sent it back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but it, that, that the one on the other side drops off also. Okay. That's why it didn't make sense for me to take that one instead of the other side. Sorry, Madam Chair. Thank you. Let me ask. I have another quick question for you. So where you are, see where you have this plan sketched out from your engineer, where you have your septic system and proposed septic system, mm -hmm. is that level with y'all yes. lot? Okay. Yes, it is. But on the other side, because it doesn't it even look off. like it, it, autumn, all all autumn. Autumn goes up a hill and down a hill. It's, okay. It's impressed. I think that's what he's, looks like that's what he was trying to depict there with those, that squiggly line, but the same length to the right of your lot? So in other words, that... Uh, uh, you, you mean where uh, Mr. Gilbert Yeah, he just mentioned, right. yeah. Yeah, that, that's a... Totally different topography. That, that, that's a topography like, like at the end of the street. Drops off. Okay, all right. Okay, what's the board's pleasure? Anybody wanna discuss? Make it. Are there any motions? No, no motion. No motion. Madam Chair, I realize oh. was, there was no motion in the packet, but the, the motion would be to authorize the chair to sign the A&R plan, which would then need to go to the Planning Commission to be approved in order for us to then go out to auction, for auction, only the 10,000 square foot section. Would I don't think you he can, I don't think, if you go, can you go back to that plan? Re, res, just respectfully. I, I don't think we can sign an A and R plan of our own land and his land that we don't have contingencies in place for before he goes and presents it. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Mr. Do you, uh, do you Yeah, I agree. You cannot that? sign a, You cannot sign an application for his property. This would be only for the town's property. But he cannot apply to the CPC without your approval. 
Ball's in your court, man. No, it's not. In, it's in our. Yeah. It's, in, it's in our. Balls. However, we're we're basically. That's kind of putting something way before we need to even. He would have to. We would have to sell it to him first before he goes to the. He is only buying a portion of that property, which does not exist until the day in our plan. Otherwise, he has to buy the whole farm. But we didn't want to sell the whole part. No, yeah. so we, we didn't want to sell the, the entire parcel. So right. we could have put that up for auction and be done with this. And he would have been done with it if he were successful, but it, and he'd be all set. Yes. But in order for we we have to determine how much of this parcel, if any, we want to sell. And so if we sign on with the A&R plan, that's a determination by this board that we're going to offer that portion of the property, that one parcel, up for sale. He doesn't own it yet, but it's part of a plan that he hopes to be able to effectuate if he's a successful bidder. When we have already we will have been stating, we will, we will be stating that we have an every intention of offering that a portion of that parcel up for sale, and this is the portion we will be offering, the 10,000 square feet. I I totally understand that. Mm -hmm. However, I think before we sign it, we should put it up for auction. That's what I think. The process shouldn't be sign and then go forward. It should be, here's the, here's the plan, here's the proposed chunk. Who wants it? Put that up out to auction. I think signing it is a step is after the that. We should have to agree with the dividing of it first, though. Madam Chair, through you, we, so generally what happens is we go through the town's um, tax title attorney and put a parcel out to auction with conditions. Right now, the only, we could put the whole parcel out, and, and we normally are doing so with the purpose of making the sale. In a past iteration when we did this, I'm trying to remember which parcel it was. I think it was off of Riverside Drive. We went through the subdivision, excuse me, the A&R process, so that we created a smaller parcel within it, and then put that parcel out to auction. Um, now, there may be other questions, like the value, for example. How do we want to handle that? You know, this is a unique situation relative to, you know, there's a significant value, I think, to that property, versus in the other instances, it generally hasn't been. Excuse me, on that Riverside Drive property, we asked the applicant to do the same thing we asked Mr. Magazine to do. We did, that's correct. So in other words, before we put it up for auction, they had their proposal, they brought it to the Planning Commission, for approval not required, and then we offered it up for sale. How come I don't remember that? How long ago was that? That was like 20 years. Oh, I thought you were going to say 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> time flies. I was going to say I was going to say maybe three years ago, but time flies. Well, maybe three years ago when we finally transferred it, but it was 2018 when we did it. 20 years ago. Too, too late for me. Yeah. Mr. Still Magazine. in grad school. Uh, <laughs> so, so to clarify one thing, you would ask me to prove that this, my lot in its own right, is a buildable a and lot. That is what the Joe Keys has in Luke Roy has done. So legally, I am a build a lot without that. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't see, see what the real point of discussing AR is at this point. I agree. So, yeah. I yes. don't know why we wouldn't, we couldn't just, we have the plan done. We can just put put out to auction that portion that's depicted on this plan. Then if it's auctioned off, then we can let the, if we want to auction it off, that is, we would let the buyer of that land then submit for a and R. Correct. But you're saying there's a reverse process. I don't. It's how we handled it last time. Okay. Sure. Really I'm not sure why, but this is quite distinct because it, it conceivably could have a bid from the other 
Not likely, not likely, but conceivably could happen. But it will not, it's not a buildable lot on its own. I mean, yes. People have to right. understand that it's not. Right, that's right. It's usually the It would be sale. written up. So yeah, that's how the contingency usually that. is. So, but in any event, we have to decide what's the board's decision with respect to selling this. Because Mr. Magazine's right, he has a big enough lot to build. This would definitely help with respect to location of the septic for his lot. So what is the board's decision with respect, Mr. Studo? Uh, <clears throat> based on what he's done here and, you know, separating the parcel, which alleviates the uh, issue I had, which was from those land guidelines, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with this. So you're, do you want to make a motion? Are you making a motion that we well, put that out to auction? Or? But my understanding is, like, step one, correct, Mr. Goberto, is that we have to do this to make it its own parcel? That's how we've handled them previously. Like, and the chair has suggested there may be another, another way. Is to there another it, way? I, I haven't explored. But Whatever way gets it to a point where yeah. Mr. Magazine can just bid and take care of it and call it a day. Correct. Okay. I don't know right. so, so much of the process. And that Mrs. Mrs. Gonzalez... You're in agreement yeah. that we would go ahead and put this out for auction. Mr. Walner, how about you? Yes, yep, Mr. Good. O'Leary? Okay, so let's do a mo that's our first, that would be our first motion, right? That we're in agreement to put up for auction this uh, parcel depicted on the L uh, LJR engineering plan, plot plan for 12 Audubon Road, map A, parcel 196, where wherein it's depicted as a portion of map A, parcel 209, which is uh, 125 feet by 100 feet, right? 125, 100, 125, 100. Did I read those dimensions 80. right? And it looks like 85 probably by 80. Should have 125 my by 80, but it's going to be 80. Excuse me, 125 by 80. Okay. So the portion that's depicted on the land. So, so <laughs> let's first address the motion of putting that up for okay. auction. Okay. Because that, that was the first thing we had to decide. Okay. So Wait a minute. We have a hand raised here. Right. Only that when we have traditionally, when the board's voted to put something out the bid, we have put conditions on it. And we did that after the process happened. Yes. So I, I, would, I, yeah. I don't have those conditions before me this evening. I wasn't prepared for that yeah. when I was. Okay. Expecting we would go through the A and R process and then come back with a parcel that you could then vote to sell at auction with conditions after you went to CPC. That was the thinking that I had. Again, I'm not saying that's the only way to do it, but okay. So, yeah, Mr. O'Leary. So, this is before us this evening because we're ready to petition the planning commission through the A and R process to subdivide this lot. So that, we, so that we would then offer it for sale once that's approved. Correct. That, that was what I was thinking based on what we did previously. Okay. So that's what we should do. Okay, but I'm not understanding why Mr. Magazoo would be submitting it and not us. That makes no sense. So that, that's just it. He can't. He, he that's needs, what I'm saying. You're your saying authority. he's going to take this to the A&R plan to them. That's what I didn't understand. He's going to do what the other property owners did on our behalf. We asked them to go out and engineer something yes. with town-owned land. Mm -hmm. We said, now go to the, through the A&R process on our behalf to do it and get it done. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. That's the same thing we did in Riverside Drive. Let's make that motion then, Mr. O'Leary. All right, wait a minute. We, we have, should we, do we have a motion on the floor? No. Mr. No. O'Leary, can you make that motion? Sure, whatever I said. <laughs> I, I generally don't listen to myself. Uh, Mr. O'Leary's <laughs> motion. <laughs> I generally don't listen to myself. No. I, I, Madam Chair, I move probably to... probably should. Yeah, I know. I, <laughs> I, I move to uh, uh, authorize the submission of an A&R uh, plan to the Community Planning Commission for a portion of, was it, Map 8, Parcel 2009, as proposed on the plan submitted, uh, presented to the board uh, by LJR Engineering, Inc., and I don't know the date. It authorized that she had to sign. It's May, yeah. It looks like May 22nd of 2022. I should put my glasses uh, on. June 9th. What is it? May, I'm looking at the May 27, 2020. Nope. That's, you're right. June 9th, June 9th 2022. 2022. <laughs> Second. All right. And authorized that she had to sign? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> on the motion, Mr. O'Leary's motion, uh, seconded by Mr. Studo. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Okay. Step one, checked off. I'll yep. sign. That goes to, we'll follow that process and then if they approve it. It will come back to you for a vote for to put it out with conditions up for auction. And at that point is when we're going to need to analyze the value of that. If, if the board so wishes, we'll, we'll begin that process now. We don't need to hold Mr. Magazine up and told him. Yes. And again, we have to keep in mind that you know he may or may not be the successful bidder, and right. people across the street may want it. And again, he already has a buildable lot, and this is just an enhancement from a public health standpoint to allow for a septic system to be put on the additional parcel, portion of parcel. Okay. So, Did you, Ms. Magazine? Yes, sir. I'm not clear on A&R. Is A&R always been my understanding when, when you have an A and R it's buildable. So why would you want to consider that buildable lot? In the past three Madam Chair, when, when we went through this the last time it did not create a buildable lot. It just it, created a small it, it, it actually event. wouldn't because it doesn't front a public way anyway. And I don't know if I zoning permits that's the process that. we went through before John with, with a couple mm -hmm. of other applicants yeah. from abutters and that was the process we needed to go through in order to Divide the property differently than the current lines in order to offer it up for sale. Yeah. I just don't want to offer somebody a buildable lot. That no, it won't be. It won't be. It's only 10,000 square feet. Yeah. And and again, right. And again, uh, the conditions are going to be that it will be combined with other parcels and all the rest. Okay. Yeah. Three Chair. It, 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 it could be a buildable lot on its own in doing this process, but the board will sell it with conditions that would not allow it to become its own buildable lot. That's, it. that's the custom. I don't know how it could be buildable, we just talked about it. Well, I, only if it was grand grandfathered as a previous, like, like my lot's smaller, but it's buildable because it's been it's a in separate separate ownership prior to the establishment of the building codes. Yes, but that doesn't apply here. We're creating it out of, we're carving it yeah. out, so that wouldn't but even that, be applicable. I, I, it didn't and, exist. And it's just yeah. And not to, to me has always meant buildable. That's right. We work with him. We've been through before. Yeah. As long as you put the words in there that yeah. people understand that it's not buildable, I'm fine. Yeah. We well, usually do, other than, you know, a, a structure basically attendant to the, you know, parcel. No no residents. No, no single family dwelling. Yeah. No dwelling. No, no dwelling. No additional no dwelling. single family dwelling. Yeah. yeah. Shed or septic, though, is something that would be. Yeah, but we're within there. Yeah. We, we created a clause last time when we had the 70,000 square feet that, and, and again, we created the, the, the wording that I can put the septic on there because originally it wasn't that's when COVID hit. Yeah. Right. That's why we. Uh, <laughs> Back, right. back again. Right. I, think, I think we're all on the same page. Okay. He knows we've been through the process before and we'll go through it again. Use the wording from back then. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And Thank you. Mr. Gilbert, you're asking us then now to determine to decide what we want to do in terms of determining the value? My thinking, Madam Chair, was to work with the assessor to try oh, to come up with the projection yes. for you yeah. and we can go from there. And that's all right with the board, right? Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. I just keep in mind that again, it isn't specific to this particular individual. It's what could anybody do with it, and how have we handled it in the past? And what we've handled it in the past to allow for our septic systems, per se, you know, it was pretty much treated the same as any other piece of town over there. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Mr. Gilberto, all yes, set with that? You. Okay, great. Thank you very much. All right, much. thank you. Next order of business is the um, vote to increase the membership of the Cultural Council. Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, through you, the Cultural Council has asked us to, uh, excuse me, the town clerk, retired, has recommended that we increase the membership to nine members. Um, that is to account for the amount of interest that they have I do believe they actually have eight members on there right now. That's so if this is something that was authorized to town meeting, there is a vote here that would allow us to expand the membership. I believe Mr. Walner is the liaison, is that correct? 
Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, I think we just I thought we'd change that. Oh, Kate is now? Is it me? I don't know. This is coming up now rather than at the regular no. appointment period because they are getting really busy with the shift yes. 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 soliciting applications. Yes. 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 So we're recommending the expansion <laughs> from the current membership to nine members. All right. Wonderful. So um, do we have any discussion on that? Let's see. <laughs> uh, where is that? Yeah, I'm looking at myself. <laughs> I think it's in North Reading, maybe. Yeah, North Reading. It's me. It's me <laughs> still. We know well that's, what, that's what I thought. <laughs> I didn't really change those around at all. I feel so confident I don't need to do <laughs> All right. All right. Um, all Phil's right. trying to reassign my, my assignments. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Madam Chair, I move to a vote to increase the size of the Cultural Council from seven to nine members. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? I'm glad there's such interest. Yes. yes. Amen That's a good to that. Thing. Almost like All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Next order of business, appointments and reappointments, facilities master plan, commission on disabilities, and taxation aid. We have motions? Yep. Madam Chair, I move to place the nomination of the following names for reappointment to the facilities master plan for terms to expire on so Abigail Herblet to expire June 30th, 2025, and Todd Wokel to expire June 13th, 2024. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Madam Chair, I move to place the nomination the following name for reappointment to the Commission on Disabilities for a term to expire on May 31, 2023. Rich Walner, the income. Second, if he's interested. <laughs> Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Madam Chair, I move to place the nomination of the following name for reappointment to the Taxation Aid Committee for a term to expire on May 31, 2023. That great guy, Rich Walner, again. Is <laughs> well, second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Just one, just one thing, because I was, I was going to do it under old and new business, but uh, this might be appropriate with the Taxation Aid Committee appointment here, is that uh, we need to advertise what town kind of meeting action was taken. Uh, for people. I mean, the, the veterans thing is just going to happen automatically, but for the uh, senior taxation aid, uh, substantially substantially changed. And I really do need to, we didn't have the, uh, we didn't find it necessary to do a lot of explaining at town meeting as to what was being proposed, but it's a huge, significant change when more and more people are going to be eligible yeah. to take advantage of it. And we, need to, we really need to uh, promote it and advertise it. And, and get it out there because I think there'll be you know, a few people who will try and will take advantage of it or yeah. a portion of it anyway. So it's further. Yeah, and I, I want to piggyback on that because I think that there's not really a good, we, when we have the, the assessor in here, we run down all of the exemptions and all of the, um, you know, programs that we have, right? And we know that here, but I don't know how much right. the public knows of it. So when, when I got asked that question about why don't you have the, all the exemptions at the town meeting, I was quite surprised at that because we usually have her list and identify them, but I don't think we did this time. And, you know, maybe to hasten the presentation. So I think that would really be helpful for there to be some informational sent out there because we already have all we have some statutory exemptions in place already, mm -hmm. and we also have other things that we've we've approved t during town meeting. And like Mr. O'Leary said during the meeting, we asked her to look again, and so these were the two that that you know we thought were important you to know, implement. To me, in this senior one, this is a, a huge well, this quantum leap for us as to what we've gotten approved through town meeting. You know, I don't think it would be inappropriate for, for mailing for eligible aged people to get a yeah. mailing from us. Sure. You know, explaining that the change was made at, yes. at the town meeting, the board proposed it, that 
uh, town meeting approved it, and this is now you're now you may be eligible for this. Mm. You know, just get it out there so that uh, into the hands of the people who may be eligible. It's uh, a mailing outside of the tax bill, separate mailing, uh, and informing it you know through the newsletter of the senior center, also including it there. Uh, will target and hit the right people, not everybody, just the right people, and the ones who may be eligible. And I just think we should promote it. I agree. Oh, I just want to add one more thing to that too, <laughs> just because I, I wanted to also. And say unless you that commit to this, I'm not going to vote. It's, it's already been drafted. Uh, oh, I, I also <laughs> want to say that w there was a question presented during our review of this with the assessor of well, what happens if that tax isn't paid? It's just deferred. And I did hear it the way my Mr. Gilberto explained it was that overlay would buffer the impact of that, but then I heard at the town meeting something different. Mm, that's correct, it will not. So, <laughs> so, so I think that it would be helpful too to explain, well, if it's not coming from the person right away, what, how, what, where is it coming from? And who's covering that? Or are we just covering that from our regular taxes that, you know, are we just buffering it ourselves? Because I didn't understand that because we did ask that during the presentation. And that's what we were told. This is, there's a um, overlay of conflict that it would be that would make up the difference. So my understanding is that that's the case for the veterans, the disabled veterans exemption, but not for the deferral. So the plan is to monitor the number of people interested, which we do not believe is going to be a large number. Um, if we see issues with regard to the impact that it's having, then we will, then we will adjust from a financing standpoint within the budget. And uh, if, if it proves to be too problematic for the town's finances, we certainly can go back to town meeting to address it at that point in time. But talking with the assessor, we do not believe that that's going to be the case based on the interest. We're not getting phone calls from people asking to defer the taxes. What we're getting are phone calls from folks who are looking for the exemptions, which we already yes. do the maximum on for so many of them. Right, right. Okay, great. All right. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Can Mr. I comment? Yes, please, <laughs> okay. Mr. Wallace. So, so uh, you know, what I've learned by being involved with the Tax Aid Committee and, and the various programs that we offer our citizens is that we have them, but we don't advertise them. We don't make it easy or accessible. And so um, I already created a one-page draft that's we want you to stay at home. It's listed, we want you to stay at home. And it lists down all the different programs that people can get involved with and understand because we just don't advertise this and it's going to drill down into all the individual websites because if you go to look at the website to find the stuff it's over here it's over here it's over here it's not consistent so we need to do a whole like marketing plan to make it so that you can land on a page understand what we have and then be able to through the website link to all the various resources that you need to know because there's rules associated with all this kind of things but we also need a flyer to go out to people so that we make it accessible to people. What's the point of having these programs if people don't know about it? It's kind of silly, right? Yeah, so, yeah. And we want people to take advantage of these programs. So it's, it makes us a friendlier place. So that's, that's, that's in process. It's going to involve me going back to like the workout program. I got to go to Karen Marlin and ask her to like work on her website. You know, so I'm going to be asking individual people to work on their websites to make this easy, easy to understand. Lexington has, like I pulled one of theirs, they have like a 12-page document that lists all their programs. But again, I want to not make it overwhelming. It. Put it in the right places with, with a one-page overview. So great. I'm on the same page as you. Because that's the most, yeah. I think, the tax aid committee can do is to do that type of thing. That's great. It goes beyond their scope. It goes beyond tax aid because it's more than just tax aid. It's the other programs. But they want to, they, they're all on board to getting that together. So we're all on the same page. One thing about your messaging and telling maybe the older population we want you to stay at home, maybe just shift that. Well, <laughs> first draft. First draft. We want, draft. You, we want you to stay in our community. That, yeah. Right? Yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. First draft. Don't, don't come out. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> don't leave. You know what I mean. Come, come out. All right. So we're really just on uh, Mr. Walner's appointment. All that dialogue. Yeah, so I'm going to, based on his comments, I'm going to support it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. I don't know that anyone's clamoring to step up for another liaison assignment. So, no. but no, <coughs> yeah, that's great work. No, All it's right. good. It's good to do yeah. it. Yeah. All right. So, motion by Mr. Wall, and a second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous.
And that's it for appointments and reappointments so far, right? Yes. No, yes. Nobody else. Um, we have the next order of business, the North Reading administrative staff vote to approve and sign the integrated contract, Correct. Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, through you, we have prepared a document that integrates the most recent memorandum of agreement approved by the board late last calendar year into the larger contract, something we've been trying to stay ahead of with most units, and so that process has been completed. Does not offer or afford any new compensation or benefits beyond what was previously agreed to. Simply incorporates changes into the master document. We have a motion. Great. Do we have a motion? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, I move to approve and sign the integrated contract between the Town of North Reading and the North Reading Administrative Staff for the term effective June 1, 2021 through June 30, 2024. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. The next order of business is to review the Town Administrative's performance evaluation. So now's the point of the meeting where we talk about Michael. And it should come as no surprise that Michael earned very high marks on his most recent evaluation by the board. Uh, Mrs. Gonzalez and I had the pleasure of meeting with Michael during that interim period that we set up um, to meet with him earlier in the year for his informal evaluation. And it, we really discussed what we could do to help him do his job better and effectuate his mission for the town better. And we did see some of those um, discussion points. We found those in the budget that was proposed. Um, so it, that's a, it's good to, he hears the feedback and he responds to the feedback and that um, that outcome was shown in the, in the budget that he proposed even though we're under, you know, slight fiscal re restrictions and we had a deficit, but anyway. As far as his performance categories, just to go over very briefly with you, in the um, five competencies, the relationship with the board. Excuse me, Madam Chair, we don't have a copy of that in our, the, the, the final tally. Should, should, is this in the packet? It's not, but okay. I can make copies of it. Why don't, would, you be, would yeah. that be okay? Yeah. Do you want me to keep going? you want to wait for the copy? No, then? that's fine. I just yeah. did. I don't yeah. know. I know, what I, some I know what I did, but I don't know what I, I don't know what the cumulative. Yes, that's, I just wanted to go over the cumulative with the board, and I did actually have a meeting with Mr. Gilberto to review what happens. As you know, as we each give our own individual evaluation to um, Bob Collins, who then compiles it. So all of the commentary that's put there, and all of the critique, and all of the complement and critique and you know <coughs> goals and objectives that we individually have are compiled so mr gilberto doesn't know neither do i who said what other than of course i know what mine is but and then we just kind of review those types of things and mr gilberto has the opportunity to provide some feedback to to us so thank you with respect to the five uh professional competencies that we evaluate as a board out of uh uh, relationship with the board, Mr. Gilberto earned a uh, 48 and a half out of a maximum of 50. So high, you know, very high tier on that. Fiscal management, 38.28 <coughs> out of 50. It's got to be 40. That's got to be out a of typo. 40. It's a typo. It's a typo. That's got to be I typo. thought it was rather low, no. but <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll, we'll, we're gonna we're gonna strike that down. Kind of lower that and yeah. like, no. <laughs> All right, it, it, it is a typo. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Walner, for pointing that out. In regard to community and public relations, it's a almost a perfect 40. Personnel administration and personnel administration, it's a 47, 47.6 out of 50. <laughs> and uh, thank you. And uh, professional skills and abilities, it's a 48.48 uh, .48 out of 50. So an overall rating of 222.22 out of 230, which brings Mr. Gilberto's rating to outstanding again this year. Yay. Yes. So we, sh we do like to take the, this opportunity individually 
as board members to thank Mr. Gilberto for the effort that he makes on behalf of the town, on behalf of the town employees. We like to thank Mrs. Gilberto because one thing is very clear that you're you know, very driven and you're very motivated and your work ethic is really top, uh, the top for the town. It's, it's, ver it's very dedicated. So we want to thank Mrs. Gilberto and your kids and, and because you, they basically have to share you with the town even when you're out doing things with them. They have to share you with the town. So we really appreciate um, all of your effort on behalf of the town. And I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues if there's any comments and questions. And Mr. Mr. <laughs> Mr. O'Leary, comments, questions? Probably, no, no questions. I mean, there's no question about it that we, you know, we're fortunate to have you uh, here uh, serving our community and living in our community and raising your kids in our community and coaching your kids in our community and everything else that you're involved with, too. But uh, this is... Uh, truly is a 24-7 job, um, even more so when you live in the community. Uh, but, uh, but again, the challenges, everybody knows what we've been up against over the last year, two, three, uh, and over the last seven or so years that you've been here, um, we've seen you grow, we continue to see you perform extremely well and serve the community well, and when you stand up at town meeting or you make a presentation here, uh, you're well respected, uh, you help keep us, you help us look good, um, it's an easy sometimes, and uh, it's a testament to your um, character, and your work ethic, and uh, we appreciate it and look for a long, long, long relationship with you. Thank you. Mr. Walner? Yeah, no, and can you make us look really good, which is really good, and I'm amazed at the amount of details you can remember on so many different topics. It's pretty uh, amazing, because I know I can't do that. So. Um, thanks for being that person who does that. And um, I think that this uh, public services director is gonna help you enjoy your job a little bit more, because um, I think it'll help break some of that out, give some focus, take a little off your plate, <coughs> get you kind of more into a big picture. Not that you're not big picture, but it gives you more of an opportunity to have a big picture view of things, so I'm really delighted with that. But no, it's been a great, it's been a great team. You know, this has been a great team. And, you know, I've never had the experience of working with another administrator to know what that's like, but I've heard stories, so I'm delighted with what I have. So thank you very much, Mark. Great job. Thank you. Mrs. Gonzalez? I, I will echo that. I was, I was also going to say I, I don't have experience with someone else either, but I know that this is a good experience. So <coughs> I want to thank you for that. And I think respect is a big word I would use for you. And. Um, Never a time that you haven't gotten back any time I needed something or asked a question, so I do appreciate that too. Mr. Studo? Well, I've leaned on Mike pretty heavy. I mean, you know, I'm the, uh, the COVID select board member of 2020, when again, like I said last year, I really didn't have anybody to call. It's like, okay, I'm just in the bunker here. I'm not allowed to go anywhere besides stop and shop, so can't really get much, uh, you know, experience there. Besides realizing the stuff in the, per you know, in the center of the store too, not just the edges. But uh, and again, it's it's very. I see what Mike does. Uh, we run in the same circles. You know, when you have little kids, it's a different proposition to do anything. Um, you know, it's nice, especially when the kids share a field and I get a question. I'm just like, you see that guy over there, about 50 <laughs> yards. Ask him. Um, but it's true, uh, there's a I mean, he does a lot, and I know that um, it can become a 24-hour day job because, you know, even people that you're friends with in town, they know what you do for work, they know that you're the TA, it's not like, it's like, well, well, I have you here, I mean, he probably gets a question now and again, and I, I'm pretty sure he doesn't say, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4, 12 on Friday, sorry, right, 8 to 12, but... So yeah, no, I, I know what he goes through and how much he has to put in and it, it's not it's not easy. And he listens to me rant sometimes when, you know, I just, you know, don't like that there's too many dandelions in the soccer field where my three year old has practice. So uh, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Just to ditto same with every everybody. I think you hear it from me a lot really appreciative of your effort for the town, really appreciative of your effort for us. 
there's never a time that I don't know that what you're, you can't read you or when I have a question, I know you're giving me a reliable response and that is invaluable in terms of me trying to do my job as a select board member as well as being informed on the votes that we take and the other things that we're doing around the town. And definitely you don't leave here at 12 on Fridays for sure. No. Or one <laughs> or anything. And sorry to nag you about eating proper meals and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I know you're not eating proper Eat meals. Eat your vegetables. <laughs> yes, I know, I know. So, but we really, <laughs> we, really, uh, we really appreciate everything you do for the town and all the effort you put in. So thank you, thank you very much. All right, and if there's <laughs> is there anything you want to tell us? <laughs> I just want to say uh, I appreciate all of your support. I think we're all uh, working together collectively for the same general purposes. And uh, I, I sit here only as a reflection of 200 or so full-time, part-time employees in the town who work every day, day in and day out um, on the community behalf. Yeah. Uh, and while they may not be sit seated here in the room with us this evening, I know we all think of them um, every day. So thank you. Sure. All right. And can I add one last thing? Yes. Because I think this thing I talked about. I look around and I think uh, Mr. Walner and Ms. Gonzalez also pointed that out. We have a stability on this board, and it starts with Mike. When you see other towns, especially the last couple of years, I mean, there's been like, you know, like a fire after another. I mean, some of those select board meetings, instead of doing what's good for the town or city, it, like it's turning into like a, a like a it looks like wrestling sometimes without the violence, right? So. <laughs> And I attribute that to Mike because when you have all the information and your job's easier, stability comes. And you know, the public doesn't look at it like, oh my God, like look at look at that dumpster fire of the select board meeting. Because it's the truth. That you should see what Facebook uh, Facebook will punish you, and other towns have been. And th that's just one of the adjectives, you know. So I just wanted to add that, that I think it starts and ends with Mike. Mm -hmm. So thank you. I agree. All right. Shall we move on? Yes. All right. Legal bills. Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for April 2022 in the amount of $12,999.82 as follows. General, $8,407.82. Labor, $1,168.50. 20 Elm Street, $3,423.50 for a total of $12,999.82. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. We should have done that one before the performance. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chair. Oh, Mr. Gilberto. I'll just note, for those of you following along, you see that we are, are headed to um, some pressure on the budget for um, town council. Um, I've spoken to the finance director, and she has requested and received a reserve fund transfer from the Finance Committee. Uh, the request was for $40,000 to cover any un uncovered uh, balance for the May and June months, but I just want to highlight, it was not un unanticipated. I know board members are aware of multiple issues, including uh, an arbitration that took quite a bit of time and expense, legal expense, um, which fortunately will be behind us and uh, should play out favorably for next year's budget. Uh, but we did request to receive that transfer to cover any, any overage. Thank you. Okay. Do we have a, do we approve that already? Yes, yep. we did. All right, T town administrator's report. Madam Chair, uh, through you, I did not submit a written report. I would just note that um, you know, I think that you and I should probably have a conversation with regarding some um, transition in, in the uh, public safety departments with some upcoming retirements and retirements that are taking place and how to properly recognize those folks. Um, There's probably too many to name. I don't want to miss anybody, so I'm not going to say anyone by name here. Uh, but there was one last week, and there are a couple that are upcoming. So we can talk further about how to most, most properly identify that. Sure. Yeah. All right. Anything else, <coughs> Mr. Gilberto? No. All sure. right. Any questions for Mr. Gilberto? All right. Let's kick, do board members and old and new together. Mr. O'Leary. First of all, congratulations to the uh, 2022 class of 2022 Hornets. Fifty years ago, I was sitting in the exact place yeah. they were on their football. Well, no, the football field wasn't turf then. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but congratulations to them and their parents, and uh, 
they had a beautiful day for it. Yeah, and, they uh, did. Aaron over here. Aaron over there. So I mean, it's terrific. It's wonderful, and uh, congratulations to them. And I'm glad the weather held out for everybody. And, uh, it's a wonderful thing. Um, Board of Health. Uh, they will be meeting at some point. Maybe this week. I'm not sure yet, but the date is. Uh, the last meeting, um, they talked about you know, COVID and all the rest of what's going on. And of course, in relation to uh, DESI, you know, Department of uh, Early Education, Secondary Schools, uh, basically dropped their guidance uh, to local board health and basically no pressed it all back. Well, not just no mask, but also the, the, uh, the testing is going to be going away and all the rest. And um, so as a proactive measure, they're going to be discussing, you know, what should they do if certain matrix, or what should they not do? They're not sure yet, but they want to inform the public uh, as to what the game plan uh, may look like or may not look like, depending upon what the numbers, uh, what the numbers do. So they'll be meeting to discuss amongst themselves um, if there's a warranted uh, action plan to be put in place in conjunction and in concert with the uh, public school system. Um, so that's going to be just a separate meeting for that um, in short order, just so that the public will be well informed as to if something triggers something, what action you know will or will not be taken. Um, keeping in mind that even though Desi is dropping all this stuff, just the last month of May, I think we had 20% of the school population test positive for COVID. So uh, that in itself is somewhat alarming, but. Variants are changing. Uh, how we're going to react is going to be very different because the guidance is not going to be coming down from necessarily from the state, and, and uh, they just want to take a proactive approach and uh, talk about it and decide if there's going to be any action needed on their part. Uh, let's see. This week, um, this week and weekend. Uh, it was interesting in our community, in our state, and in our nation in relation to the March for Our Lives and the Pride Parade. We can take a lot of uh, pride but solace in the fact that our community is uh, engaged. And, uh, I, I'm happy and sad at the same time. You know, the fact that they need to be engaged is of concern. You know, uh, in relation to the March for Our Lives, we shouldn't be talking about this, but we have to talk about it. And I'm heartened by the fact that we have local activists here. Um, uh, fortunately, I wasn't able to attend on uh, setting the one here, but I, I did go to the March for Our Lives in Boston uh, with my wife and a few other local residents uh, to participate, just to lend some support. But the heartening part is that the younger generation is sending us a message. And most of the speakers that I heard in Boston were young people who were just saying, wake up. What do we need to do here? Yep. We need to do something. Same thing with, with the Pride March. Why do we have to have a Pride March? It's an unfortunate set of circumstances that we have to do this sort of thing, but it's a wonderful thing that it's happening. So again, I have these mixed emotions as to what's transpired, but I am heartened by the fact that it's, it's happening in North Reading, and that's a good thing. Um, so I just wanted to, to comment on that and that, uh, applaud everybody who's, who's coming out and taking an active uh, role in participating. Um, let's see, what else do I have here? I just want to wish a speedy recovery to Karen Marlin, who we all know and love, and um, hope she's on the road to recovery and back at her desk, short order, <laughs> short order. Because it's tough picking up the, picking up the slack, wouldn't you say? All good. <laughs> That's a lot for us. And, and, and finally, you, Celtics, I hope they do it tonight and the next game, you can get it over with and just be done with it. So, go sell things. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, I believe the board else meeting at 3.30 tomorrow. Is what I saw. 3.30 tomorrow? Okay. 3.30 tomorrow. All right. All right. Continue on the Board of Health things. I actually, we had a clinic here today. I went to. I got my fourth shot. So I want to remind people in town that this is still going on and that there's another um, one on July 11th and then one on August 15th. And it was, you walked in, you got it done. You know, it was that super, super simple to do. So uh, don't be shy about signing up for it. And you only need a four month gap between your previous shot and the shot now. So I was right at five months. So uh, be sure to get your shot. Um, 
Uh, as a reminder, tomorrow night at the high school at 7 o'clock, we're going to be doing the rail trail uh, public hearing. So it's a public hearing. Um, it's going to be live. And it's going to be on NORCAM as well? Okay, great. Yeah, it's going to be on NORCAM. And it's going to be a review of the plan that uh, Phil has already put together. And then we'll be going through the FAQs because there's a lot of FAQs we've picked up along the way. And then uh, getting public opinion. I can tell you since we launched this in March, um, some issues have already gone away just by announcing it. And we're, we did a walk of the trail about a week and a half ago to show the LUC people who hadn't done that walk how beautiful it was in the back. And I think it was a consensus that it was quite beautiful when you get access to these parts of the world that we haven't seen. That this is, you know, that's one of the justifications for moving ahead in this project. So feeling good about that. Meanwhile, there's a $500,000 grant we applied for. Hopefully that comes through in June or July. That will help if we do this by October, we're gonna have some more answers. So uh, be sure to come out tomorrow night and come see that or watch online. Um, the Forest Committee, thanks, thanks to town for supporting us. We're into the RFP world now to bring in a consultant, so thank you for supporting that. And I guess I'll be drafting up the RFP, which I've never done before, because we have a very thin cr crew of three people in our, in our group. Um, I was approached by this, this is, uh, this is probably going to involve you, um, as the liaison for the, I didn't even know we even had this, uh, Energy Con Conservation Committee. I believe this is where it's going to land. But I got approached by, um, it's called the Green Communities Division uh, of Massachusetts. And it's basically, they um, will provide to you money up to $200,000 a year um, if you work with them on uh, five factors of them trying to improve, as a town, your energy use and uh, things of that nature. Um, this is not a new program. We're actually like there's 200 of uh, the 330 towns in, in the state. There's a 290 that have already signed up for this. We're not one of those. So they came to us to ask if we'd like to be involved with that. It's uh, you can get up to grants of $200,000 per year up until you hit 750,000. Then it goes down to 100,000 per year. But it's all about energy conservation. And um, I think that what you were just I was just asking about this group. Jennifer did a deep dive. We've had this energy conservation committee, but it's never really gotten off the ground. I think the last time we saw action was 2015 or something like that. So this might be a good way to combine the two. I think it's going to also involve um, it, it. It's going to involve our MLD because it falls into their their governance, I guess you could say as well, or their authority. So th that's one of the reasons why our community hasn't been involved because. When you have municipalities, municipal um, suppliers, it ends up to be a little bit of an interference because they like their independence. But this would be a great one to explore. And so um, I'm happy to hand it over to you or I'm happy to do an introduction to you. But I think it'd be good for us to explore it and see, what's, what, see what it's all about. And, and they reminded me too, they came back and reminded me that RMLD has offered us to put in some charging stations actually as a grant if we ever want to do that without paying for that. So they're, they're being very proactive in trying to do that. So I can talk to you more about okay. that afterwards. I thought that'd be something we could really look at. Maybe revive that um, group. Um, last thing I'll say is uh, uh, I, I was in the parade yesterday. And uh, so we're, there were th my wife and I and then our neighbor sat in as well. And we ha all our neighbors got out. And um, so we were like, we wanted a spot. Who, who had the most energy? Because we were in the cars, but you're looking for people to be in the audience. And so there was one person who stood out. And so I put together a little informal award for number one Pride Parade participant. And it was no doubt, it was our own <laughs> Kate Ben Kelly, who was, Thank who, you. Was, who was so enthusiastic. <laughs> that, that is so fun. Oh, you know, that's just so wanna, cute. I, honestly, you. honestly, she really, I was like, is that Kate up there? And we're all like, those are little comments that we made in the oh, car. Looking at you, and you're the one. So you got you got our first yes. unofficial. That's fun. That was fun. It I was really fun. Was it was fun. a good time. It was yeah. really good. Yeah. And it's all about inclusion That's and building our yeah. community. That's it's a celebration. <laughs> it really is truly a celebration. Yeah. It's it inclusion. Was. Yeah. Bringing people together. So it's nice to see yeah. your enthusiasm. You really were the most enthusiastic. So <laughs> it's not not get the, them to beep and wave. No, and no. Yeah. It's it's really yeah. just fun. It's just fun stuff to do. And it, it does say our community welcomes all our neighbors, whoever they are.
That was great, yeah. That's All it. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Walner. Mrs. Gonzalez, that's cute. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> last Friday, I was honored to represent the board at um, up at the memorial on the common to um, have Andrew DiPietro, I'm hoping I'm saying that right. That is his yeah. name, Andrew DiPietro. DiPietro. Yep. Okay. Uh, a North, uh, 2018 North Reading graduate um, will be commissioned and signed um, his, his enlistment contract into the United States Marine Corps. So we were, I was there with uh, Sue Magner, our veterans director, and Brian Jones was there, and um, some other people. It, there was a nice, a nice crowd, a lot of his friends and family. There was a really good crowd there. Um, to to honor that, and so I want to congratulate him publicly. It was very impressive. It was very well done. Um, and I wanted to talk about the National Night Out that I talked about last time, um, which is going to be August Tuesday, August second at Ipswich River Park. Um, Amy Luck Luckwitz. I'm so bad with names. Um, is looking for vendors to participate in that. Um, if you want to go on to the Community Impact Team's website or their Facebook page, you can get information about the requirements of the vendors. There are some requirements. They need to have um, something to do with the National Night Out and, and police enforcement and that kind of a thing. Um, the tables are free, and she's just looking for people to to do those tables. So um, if anybody's interested, they can contact her and um, make this a great night. <coughs> Mrs. Looking Gonzalez, forward to having it again. Is there a deadline to sign up for that? And, t and the types of vendors that are there can be, it's pretty broad. I don't, we haven't had one in a while, but. Um, they had they had pretty much a variety of vendors that were there at the last the last one. That there we is had. a variety, but there are requirements. Yes. Um, there are guidelines, I should say. Um, so I think the dance studios yeah. were there, and they do performances. The the so fire the, the, and the, the police karate, are there. They've done demos. Karate, karate demos. Demo. Yeah, nonprofit yeah, groups yeah. are yeah. encouraged. Um, like they don't want political groups or lobbying groups. Mm -hmm. They, you know, that kind of thing. They don't want um, performances. Yes. Food vendors. Um, Can they? Um, they, well, they, uh, they yeah, they the, they the police serve. department. Yeah. Oh, they grills. have that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's not they do a big grill. Yeah. Um, Council of Aging has been yes, there. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, right. You know, potentially. I don't know. Maybe you could potentially yeah. put up the sewer thing. Potentially. Yeah. But so it was fun, and the, the fire department's usually there. The right. sheriff's department is there. Yeah, they do the dog, the <laughs> canine. Yeah, the canines, yeah. It's kind of bringing the community and the yeah. law enforcement together, yeah. and yeah. A lot of people come. Yes. It's big. Yeah, it's yeah. a fun it's night. Big. So, but but she is she hasn't heard from people vendors, so she All is right. looking reaching for out for that. Hmm. <laughs> you all, was there anything else, Mrs. Gonzalez? Could I tell you? Are you all set? Yeah. I just want to fill it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> please. On the website, slash CIT. There is a link in there. Oh, that cool. There's a performer. Oh, excellent. So you can sign right on there. There's information about National Night Out. So Great. Uh, it is available. Great. Um, and then, Madam Chair, to, you, to the issue of the RFPs, Mr. Walner, that Forrester Green will work on, uh, Ms. McKnight may have a template that will work for you. Can you say that a little louder? Ms. McKnight may have a, a template that could work for you. Oh, I, okay. So, I think. <laughs> Yeah, we we yes. picked a template so I can Perfect. save time, cut and paste that kind yeah. of thing. You don't have to do that from Thank scratch. You. That don't reinvent the wheel on that. Yeah, one. no, okay. it's totally. Yeah. Um, I steal and I steal away free freely. Okay. Any, I, I just can? wanted to congratulate the graduates also. Yeah. All right. Mr. Studo. I only have boring stuff to talk about. Wastewater and sewer. Just to give a little bit of uh, 
an update of what information will come out. So myself, Mr. O'Leary, and uh, Mr. Gilberto, again, um, there's going to be a lot of information that we're going to be presenting in the next uh, 30 days, if not sooner, to the board and to the community. Um, so bear with us, because I know already there's been um, we, we did get people uh, pretty excited after town meeting. I think it's starting to set in that, you know, as uh, Mr. O'Leary and others uh, noted, that uh, we are closer than we've been. So there's going to be a lot of information to a lot of those questions that, you know, we've been telling people to be patient. So again, I'm just saying people be just a little bit more patient. We want to make sure that we present a clear picture with all the information so then we can answer it. Not a, well, you know, we weren't prepared. We just felt like we had to rush it. So again, um, it will come fast and furious, no pun intended, but that's how it will be. And then, uh, you know, I'm sure that it will be uh, discussed, uh, you know, it, in, in a very, uh, you know, long form fashion, for lack of a better word. So, um, yep, that's it. I just wanted to uh, put that out because it's the first meeting we've had since the town meeting. And I think that uh, it started hitting home that, you know, I mean, we're putting in the steps to have this larger conversation, and it's, you know, the conversation's coming, and I just wanted to point that out. Do you think that we'll have a presentation for our next meeting in July? Do you think something will be ready at that point? That's the plan. Yes. That's the plan. Okay, that'd be yes. great. Yeah. Um, and, uh, that, that'd be good, just to get that discussion rolling. The reason it wasn't this evening, we, we went over in detail with the consultants on what they had to date. Uh, we had questions uh, that we felt needed to be answered and need to be explained a little more clearly for everybody. And we, it wasn't, they've done an awful lot of work. It just wasn't ready for tonight. And we didn't, what we didn't want to do, what we don't want to do is we don't want to create any confusion so that uh, we don't want to come in here and say, hey, this is where we're at, um, and we've got this to look at still, but this is where we're at, and this is going to raise a lot more questions when we think if we took another week or two, we would have a lot more clear uh, presentation to the board. Uh, and we're hoping to share that information with you before the board meeting, so you'll have a chance to take a look at it in relation to the betterments and the opportunities and the different uh, ways that they handle, so you have a clearer understanding before they come in, so you can help formulate your thoughts and, and questions ahead of time. Yeah, and this information just came through, too. Remember, we even mentioned it, I think, at the last meeting that... We well, mentioned the, the time meeting. Yeah, the timeline, like, you know, so it was even... Um, even when you've been involved intimately with the process, like the it, like the information dump can be like overwhelming, so it needs to just be put in... Same information, but just in a format where you can explain it. You know, because even... When I saw it at first, and like I've been in every single one of those, it's like you try to just wrap your head around it. You know what I mean? So it was a uh, rough format just to try to get it. So, but I just wanted to share that update. That'd be good. That way we can digest it. But I also think a lot of the there was a, quite a bit of dialogue generating just from the sewer, the betterment bylaw change, which got overwhelming support at the town meeting. But I think there was. There's a, there's a lot of forecasting that you could hear people asking those questions. Again, certainly would need to would need to answer, I think. You, know, the, you could hear the types of questions forecast at the town meeting, I think. Which was good. It, it, again, yes, that's one of the reasons great. why we wanted that, be, that betterment bylaw yes. change Different. in Separate. June yeah. so that it would, again, stimulate the thought process in everybody's mind, but also raise the questions and while we're trying to keep it separate from the specific project that we're talking about, this is just a bit general bylaw change, it was important to get it out there, get people thinking about it, talking about it, and raise the concerns so that we can uh, we can address them. Again, we're trying to be uh, upfront, you know, there's nothing to hide as we said at town meeting, and uh, so we'll give you the information as soon as we have it. But we are, it's a very aggressive schedule, and we're gonna keep to it, and we're gonna uh, get it done. Great. Anything else? Good. All right. Yeah, just everything I was going to mention has already been mentioned, but the great, great graduation. Well done. That, um, and that, as well as the, um, the town meeting, we just want to just acknowledge public facilities and 
the administration because they, from the setup to the breakdown, they're there way before us and long after we leave. And you know that is such a big help to us. We had a great turnout. I thought the town meeting would have been nice to have more, but it's more than we normally get. So that was <laughs> that was promising. And uh, but the graduation was fun. This parade was fun just to be outside with people and for a change, something something different where you're you're with with other people. It was great. So well done to well done organizing it. I wish this this parade were larger, I think. It, I think it may have coincided with the March, March uh, for Our Lives rallies and things like that. So I think people would take it. And plus, it was a beautiful beach day. So yeah, right. I think yeah, people Sunday were, afternoon. It's hard to. Yes, no, right, plus there was right. a lot of things going. I was there forced was to go to a wedding shower. Yeah. yeah, there was other things and a beautiful, finally beautiful sunshine day. But it was a perfect day for this. On record. And great that people. Great that people decorated. That was fun. Yeah. I also forgot to mention too, which is something to acknowledge that um, the North Reading Boys track team won d a Division Five title. Yeah. So um, wow. Ryan Spinney, their coach Spinney, they they, um, they came back with the title. And I, I think the girls team also got a a, a relay. Uh, they won. I know. I'm looking at Mrs. McNeil. They took a, a title in a, in one of the um, one of the uh, meets too. So they're doing quite well. They're working hard at it. They have a great coaching staff, great coaching team. Coach Spinney is pretty beloved by these kids, and they're just working and working and working at it. So that's some quite an accomplishment. I for think it's the first for North Reading also. It's the awesome. Division yeah. Title, right? Yeah. So it's a Division Five title. Yep. They're on the book. They're on the books now. Oh, so it's great. quite a quite an accomplishment. And I think that I think that's all I wanted to mention. We should keep our newest Marine in our prayers. Yes, because there's a lot of turmoil in the world. So thank God we have people stepping up to do that. <coughs> all right. Any, and then we'll hear the list of people that are leaving us and retiring right at the next meeting. So we do want to definitely acknowledge them in some way. Some of them I think have already retired because I'm look I'm seeing that on some Facebook posts. And they're people that have been around for a while, so That's right. if it's if it's okay to have, you know, them in or ask them in to acknowledge them or at least we can recognize them, I think that's a good idea. All right. Madam Chair, I move to adjourn. Second that. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 A